I hereby announce my retirement from Formula One by the end of the 2022 season. Eight hundred sixty-eight drivers from forty-one different countries have competed in Formula One since its inception in 1950. The vast majority have played only a small part in the sport's history or made a name for themselves elsewhere, but a significant minority have achieved long-standing success and immortalised themselves not only as icons of Formula One, but the entire sporting world. One such driver broke numerous youth records early in his career, wowing everyone with his raw speed, while also being hot-headed and at times self-centred, but developed over time into a mature father figure in the Formula 1 paddock, with a kind-hearted nature and quick-witted sense of humour. An unstoppable force in his prime, who will soon be leaving Formula 1 with a legacy few can outrank, this is the story of Sebastian Vettel. Sebastian Vettel was born on July 3rd, 1987, in Heppenheim in the state of Hesse in what was then West Germany. He grew up in a lower middle class family as his father Norbert was a scaffolder and was also an amateur hill climb racer. When Sebastian was three years old, he received a go-kart as a present and he took to it like a duck to water, driving it around the family property at his grandfather's bus company and any empty car park his father could find. He started racing karts competitively aged eight in 1995, finishing third in his very first race held at Waldorf and it was that year that he also met the then defending Formula 1 world champion Michael Schumacher at the kart circuit at Kerpen, where Schumacher had started his karting career, and immediately idolised him and wanted to follow him into Formula 1. He proved his worth and started winning junior titles immediately, and in 1998 was accepted into the Red Bull junior team, alleviating any financial concerns as he ascended up the karting ranks. He didn't win any titles in 2000, but in 2001 won the German and European Karting Championships and the Monaco Kart Cup, and in 2003, aged 15, graduated to single-seaters by joining Eiffelland Racing in Formula BMW ADAC. He had a very strong debut season, as he achieved 5 wins, 12 podiums, 5 pole positions and 4 fastest laps, vastly outperforming teammate Andreas Wirth, and finished runner-up in the championship to Maximilian Goetz. That year, he also travelled to the United States to test a champ car with Renard Motorsport at the Homestead Road Course. For his second campaign in Formula BMW ADAC in 2004, he moved to frontrunner's Muka Motorsport, replacing Maximilian Goetz, and proved himself to be an unstoppable force, as out of 20 races, he won 18 of them, got second and third in the other two, got 14 pole positions and 13 fastest laps, and won the title by over 100 points and with three races remaining. Off the back of this, he remained with Muka Motorsports but graduated to the Formula 3 Euro Series for 2005. The season was dominated by Lewis Hamilton, and Vettel failed to win any races but got six podiums and one fastest lap and finished fifth in the championship, far ahead of teammate Attila Abroy, who was runner-up to him in Formula BMW ADAC the previous year and finished 15th. Midway through the year, he made a single appearance in Spanish Formula 3 for racing engineering, replacing Felipe Albuquerque at Albacete and finished third. A week later, he competed in the Masters of Formula 3 and qualified 14th and finished 11th. In between the final two rounds of the Formula 3 Euro Series, he got his first taste of Formula 1 by testing the Williams FW27 at Jerez, which he got as he had been jointly sponsored by Red Bull and Williams engine suppliers BMW since winning the Formula BMW ACAC title and became one of the youngest people to ever drive a Formula 1 car, aged just 18 years 86 days. He then ended a productive year by debuting in the Macau Grand Prix, driving for French team ASM Formula 3 and qualified 8th and finished 3rd. He moved to ASM Formula 3 full-time in 2006 for a second campaign in the Formula 3 Euro Series, with whom Lewis Hamilton had won the title in 2005, and was partnered by fellow future Formula 1 drivers Paul de Resta, Guido van der Gaard, and Kamui Kobayashi. He won four races, got nine podiums, one pole position and five fastest laps, but lost out on the title to teammate De Resta by 11 points. Mid-season, he did two rounds of Carlin in the Formula Renault 3.5 series, and at Misano finished second in the first race and won the second race from pole, but at Spa was involved in a big accident at Radion in the first race and narrowly avoided having a finger sliced off by flying debris, and sat out the second race, but a week later made his second appearance in the Masters of Formula 3 and qualified fifth and finished sixth. 
Later that month, he was loaned out by Red Bull to BMW Sauber as their third driver following the departure of Jacques Villeneuve and the promotion of Robert Kubica, and made his Grand Prix weekend debut at the Turkish Grand Prix, where he became the youngest ever driver at that time to participate in a Grand Prix weekend, aged 19 years and 53 days. He also broke the record for fastest fine in Formula 1 history, speeding in the pit lane just 6 seconds after leaving the garage, but made up for this by going second fastest in FP2. He ran as third driver at every remaining race that year, and went fastest in both FP1 and FP2 at Monza. He ended the year with his second appearance at the Macau Grand Prix, and got caught in a three-car pile-up in the qualifying race, started the main race at the back, and finished lapped in 23rd. He remained BMW Sauber's third driver in 2007, and drove the third car for them at the Australian and Malaysian Grand Prix before beginning his second campaign with Carlin in Formula Renault 3.5. He started strongly with a third at Monza, a pole and a win at the Nürburgring, and then second at Monaco before getting his big break in Formula 1. Robert Kubica suffered a major crash at the Canadian Grand Prix which forced him to sit out the United States Grand Prix at Indianapolis, so Vettel was called up to replace him. He made it into Q3 and qualified 7th in what was the third fastest car on the grid, but had a shaky start as he ran across the grass at Turn 1 and lost positions. He was stuck in traffic for large parts of the race, but late retirements for teammate Nick Heidfeld and Nico Rosberg meant he finished 8th to score a point on his debut. He returned to Formula Renault 3.5 and finished 4th and 3rd at Hungary, but after the European Grand Prix, fellow Red Bull junior Scott Speed was fired from B-team Scuderia Toro Rosso, and so Vettel was released from BMW and offered Speed's seat from the Hungarian Grand Prix onwards, and for the whole of 2008. So despite comfortably leading the championship, Vettel abandoned Formula Renault 3.5 to become a full-time Formula 1 driver. At the time, Toro Rosso were 10th in the Constructors' Championship and had had just 7 classified finishes from 20 starts in the least reliable car on the grid. Vettel started out fairly unassumingly, qualifying 20th and finishing 16th at Hungary, qualifying 20th again and finishing 19th in Istanbul, qualifying 16th at Monza but hitting Anthony Davidson on the first lap and losing his front wing and finishing 19th, and then qualifying 17th at Spa but suffering a steering failure on lap 9. At the Japanese Grand Prix, held at Fuji Speedway in torrential rain, he proved his wet weather skills by making it into Q3 and qualifying a very strong 9th, and started the race 8th. The first part of the race was run behind the safety car, but he managed to take 3rd early on. He briefly led the race at one point, becoming the youngest driver ever to do so, and was back in third when the safety car was brought out following Fernando Alonso's crash. However, while weaving behind the safety car, he crashed heavily into Red Bull senior Mark Webber in second, taking both out of the race, depriving himself and Toro Rosso of their first ever podiums, Toro Rosso's first points of the year, and Red Bull's first double podium. When being interviewed by ITV's Louise Goodman afterwards, Webber said on live television, It's kids, isn't it? Kids with not enough experience, they do a good job and then they f*** it all up. Vettel was initially given a 10-place grid penalty for the next race, but amateur footage later released showed that Webber had been caught out by race leader Lewis Hamilton braking hard and had to do the same in order to avoid getting a penalty for overtaking behind the safety car, and Vettel was caught out with the lack of visibility, so this was reduced to a reprimand. Hamilton was then investigated by the FIA for dangerous driving, but no penalty was imposed. At the Chinese Grand Prix, Vettel qualified 12th, but was demoted to 17th for blocking Heike Kovalainen in qualifying. Rain came again in the race, and Vettel gained 5 places at the start and ran a one-stop strategy and finished in a sensational 4th place, giving Toro Rosso their best ever result at that time. Teammate Vitantonio Liuzzi also finished 6th, which also crucially jumped the team from 10th in the Constructors' Championship, ahead of main rivals Spiker, Super Aguri and Honda to 7th. At the season finale at Interlagos, he qualified 13th and suffered a hydraulic failure on lap 35, and ended his debut season 14th in the Drivers' Championship with 6 points. He closed out the year by partnering up with his hero Michael Schumacher to represent Germany in the race of champions, and he was knocked out in the first round of the Drivers' Cup by Heiko Reinen of Team Finland, but with Schumacher defeated him and teammate Marcus Gronholm in the final of the Nations' Cup. He was retained by Toro Rosso for 2008, but teammate Liuzzi was replaced with four-time Champ Car champion Sebastian Bourdais. The team were forced to use a B-spec model of 2007's STR2 for the first five races while the STR3 was still being built, but Vessel had the weakest start of all the drivers as he failed to see the chequered flag at all in the first four races. 
He made Q3 in Australia to qualify 10th and started 9th, but was taken out by Jensen Button at Turn 1, while Bourdais finished 7th to score 2 points in a race of only 8 finishers. He qualified 15th at Sepang, then suffered a hydraulic failure on lap 40. In Bahrain, he was knocked out in Q1 and started 19th, but hit Adrian Sutil at Turn 1 and damaged his front wing and was then taken out by Anthony Davidson at Turn 4. And then, at Barcelona, he qualified 18th and was caught out by a spinning Adrian Sutil at Turn 4. At Istanbul, he qualified 14th and finally saw the chequered flag and finished 17th and last. The SCR3, essentially a Red Bull RB4 with a year-old Ferrari engine instead of a Renault one, was launched at the Monaco Grand Prix, and it was here that Vettel's campaign began to turn around. He also began a tradition of naming his cars, saying, It's important to have a close relationship with a car. Like a ship, a car should be named after a girl as it's sexy, and christened the STR3 as Julie. He qualified 18th and started 19th after getting a 5 place grid penalty for a gearbox change, but rain came in the race and he managed to get himself all the way up to 5th. He crashed at turn 9 in FP3 in Montreal and so didn't qualify, but gained several places during a mid-race safety car and late in the race was up in 8th. Several times he cut the final chicane in order to prevent Heike Kovalainen from passing him to secure the point, but was not investigated for this. He qualified 13th at Mani Corps and started and finished 12th. For the British Grand Prix, he qualified a season's best 8th, but in a wet race had a very poor start and was then hit by David Coulthard at Priory on the first lap and spun off into the gravel. At his first home race, it was announced that following Coulthard's impending retirement, he would be replacing him at Red Bull for 2009 and partnering Mark Webber on a three-year contract, with an option for 2012. He qualified 9th and finished 8th to score a point, and at Hungary he qualified 11th but retired with an overheating engine on lap 23. For the first ever running of the European Grand Prix at Valencia, he gave himself and Toro Rosso their best ever qualifying result with 6th, and then finished there too. He qualified behind teammate Bourdais in 10th at Spa, and was running behind him for the entire race until rain came in the final two laps, and he passed him on the final lap, but was then passed by Fernando Alonso at the final corner to finish 5th, while Bourdais dropped from 3rd to 7th. Rain came yet again for the team's home race at Monza. Little to no running was done by anyone in practice, and Toro Rosso went for a low downforce dry weather setup, but despite that, Vettel shockingly took pole position, becoming the youngest pole sitter in Formula 1 history aged 21 years 72 days, and Bourdais had also qualified a season's best fourth. The race, likewise, was wet, and while Bourdais stalled at the start of the formation lap and started the race a lap down, Vettel led the entire thing to give Toro Rosso their maiden win and become the youngest Grand Prix winner in Formula 1 history at that time. His form continued and the gap between himself and Bourdais only widened at the inaugural Singapore Grand Prix, where he qualified 7th and started 6th and Bourdais qualified 17th, and he got up to 5th at the start and despite all the mayhem mid-race managed to stay there. Upon returning to Fuji for the Japanese Grand Prix, he qualified 9th with Bourdais 10th and was initially beaten by Bourdais and finished 7th. However, after the race, Bourdais was unfairly given a 25 second time penalty for a collision with Felipe Massa that was not his fault and dropped to 10th. Vettel qualified 8th and started 6th in Shanghai, but finished outside the points in 9th. At the season finale at Interlagos, he qualified 7th, and in the closing stages of the race when rain started coming down past Lewis Hamilton for 5th, and in so doing deprived Hamilton of the points he needed to take the title from Felipe Massa. Both drivers however passed a struggling Timo Glock at the last corner of the last lap which meant Vettel finished 4th and Hamilton did become champion. He ended the season 8th in the Drivers' Championship with 35 points, and almost single-handedly dragged Toro Rosso to 6th in the Constructors' Championship, ahead of senior team Red Bull. At the end of the year, he made his second appearance in the Race of Champions as part of Team Germany with Michael Schumacher. He was knocked out in the quarter-finals of the Drivers' Cup by Sebastian Loeb of Team France, but he and Schumacher successfully defended the Nations' Cup by beating Tom Christensen and Matthias Ekström of Team Scandinavia in the final. Vettel had punched well above his weight all year, scored almost 10 times the points of teammate Bourdais, and in 11 years of racing no other Toro Rosso driver was able to emulate his performances. In recognition of this, he was named Rookie of the Year at the Autosport Awards, and received the Lorenzo Bandini Trophy. Significant rule changes came in 2009 that allowed the Formula 1 grid to reset itself. The front wing was lowered and widened, the rear wing was made taller and narrower, 
Most of the elaborate aerodynamic appendages from 2008 had gone, and grooved tyres were replaced with slicks. It was clear in pre-season testing that Adrian Newey had built a competitive car, which Vettel named Kate, and this was reinforced by Vettel qualifying third at the season opening Australian Grand Prix, behind the two Braun GPs of Jensen Button and Rubens Barrichello, who the previous year as Honda had been one of the backmarkers. Barrichello stalled at the start, which gave Vettel second, and he ran there for the entire race until being chased down by Robert Kubica in the final laps. They collided at turn 3 on lap 56 while Kubica was going around the outside, with less than 3 laps to go, and both lost their front wings. Kubica crashed out at turn 5, and Vettel also hit the wall there and broke his left front wheel off. He tried to carry on, but pulled over at turn 11 on the penultimate lap and was classified in 13th, while Button comfortably won. At Sepang, Vettel was given a new chassis which he christened Kate's Dirty Sister and qualified third, with Button on pole again, but had been given a 10-place grid penalty for causing the collision with Kubica in Melbourne, so started 13th. He made slow progress, and early on rain started coming down, which quickly became torrential. He pitted for wet tyres and was up to 8th, but on lap 31 he spun at turn 8 and stalled the car, only a lap before the race was red flagged and half points were awarded, with Button winning again. At the Chinese Grand Prix, Vettel got his campaign back on track by giving Red Bull their first ever pole position, and in yet another wet race, took a comfortable lights to flag victory to give Red Bull their first win, and with teammate Weber in second their first 1-2, with Button over 40 seconds behind in third, and he jumped to third in the Drivers' Championship. He qualified third at Sakia, just ahead of Button in fourth, but surprisingly behind the two Toyotas of Jano Trulli and Timo Glock, who were one of three teams along with Braun GP themselves and Williams who were running a controversial double diffuser, which the other teams were insisting was illegal. Vettel lost two places at the start, and later passed the two Toyotas and finished second behind winner Button. At Barcelona, he qualified second behind Button, but had another poor start and finished fourth behind Weber and Barrichello, with Button taking another win. Red Bull introduced their own double diffuser at Monaco, but Vettel qualified a slightly disappointing fourth, and then crashed out at Santavo on lap 16. The effectiveness of their new diffuser was proven at Istanbul as Vettel took pole, but was passed by Button at the start and later Weber and finished third. He was now third in the Drivers' Championship with less than half the points of Button, who had won six of the first seven races, but from here on things began to turn around. Vettel took pole at the high-speed Silverstone by a very convincing three-tenths from Barrichello, with Button all the way down in sixth, and won the race by 15 seconds from Weber and over 40 seconds ahead of Button who stayed sixth, and by getting the fastest lap also achieved his first hat-trick and became the youngest driver ever to do so, aged 21 years 353 days. For his home race, now held at the Nürburgring, he qualified fourth behind both Brauns and teammate Weber on pole, and lost two places at the start but eventually passed both Brauns to finish second behind Weber, who took his first ever win, despite taking a drive through penalty in the race, and he jumped up to second in the Drivers' Championship, but was still 21 points behind Button. He qualified second at the Hungarian Grand Prix, surprisingly behind Fernando Alonso, with Button in eighth, but had yet another terrible start and dropped to 7th, then later had a slow stop and later had to retire with broken rear suspension and dropped to 3rd in the Drivers' Championship as Weber finished 3rd and Button was 7th. Vettel's engine blew in the heat in FP3 at Valencia and he qualified 4th with Button 5th and had to pit twice early on as the fuel pump failed the first time and then the engine later blew up again, and he now dropped to 4th in the Drivers' Championship as Barrichello won the race and Button was 7th. He qualified a lowly 8th at Spa, with Weber 9th, and Barrichello was 4th but Button was all the way down in 14th. Button was caught in a 4-car pile-up on the first lap, and Vettel drove strongly and finished 3rd with Barrichello 7th and Weber 9th, and jumped back up to 3rd in the Drivers' Championship. At Monza, the site of his maiden win the previous year, he qualified 9th, with Weber 10th and Button and Barrichello 5th and 6th, but had little pace on the low down force circuit and finished in 8th, with Barrichello and Button 1st and 2nd and Weber crashing out on the first lap. Singapore suited Red Bull better, and he qualified 2nd with Weber 4th, Barrichello 5th and Button 12th. Vettel drove erratically while challenging Lewis Hamilton for the lead, running over curbs and damaging the floor and losing a mirror, and he was then given a drive-through penalty for speeding in the pit lane and dropped to 4th, just ahead of both Brauns, with Weber crashing out again. 
Suzuka was another circuit that suited Red Bull, and Vettel took his first pole since Silverstone, while Weber crashed in FP3 and didn't qualify, and Barrichello and Button were 5th and 7th, but due to a plethora of grid penalties started 6th and 10th. Vettel led the entire race and took his third win of the season, with Barrichello 7th, Button 8th and Weber last in 17th, and was now only 2 points behind Barrichello but still 16 points behind Button with 2 rounds remaining. Torrential rain came in qualifying it into Lagos, and Vettel was knocked out in Q1 for the first time that year and started 15th, while Button had only done one better, but Barrichello was on pole. Both Vettel and Button gained places in the opening laps, and Vettel eventually leapfrogged Button in the pit stops who had been stuck behind debutant Kamui Kobayashi for several laps, and Vettel managed to finish 4th, while Weber won after Barrichello got a puncture and dropped to 8th, but with Button finishing 10 seconds behind Vettel in 5th, he took the Drivers' Championship and Braun GP took the Constructors' Championship. With both titles now wrapped up, the season ended with the inaugural Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Vettel qualified second, but inherited the lead from Lewis Hamilton after a gearbox failure and won his fourth race of the year, and he finished runner-up to new champion Button with 84 points, 11 behind. He then ended the year by making his third appearance alongside Michael Schumacher in the race of champions, and was knocked out by Schumacher himself in the semi-finals of the world final, but together they ironically defeated Jensen Button and Andy Prio of Team Great Britain in the final of the Nations Cup to win it for the third year in a row. 2009 was a difficult year for Vettel. He was given a competitive car that was fast enough to win the championship and largely outpaced Weber, but drove erratically across the season and made a succession of errors that cost him a lot of points. He was on the back foot already by crashing out in Australia, Sepang and Monaco, and despite Button not winning any races beyond Turkey, never managed to catch him, with further setbacks in Hungary, Valencia and Singapore. He did, however, demonstrate the speed he had shown off at Toro Rosso, as each of his four wins were done in a dominant fashion, and he made Q3 in all but one race. He was awarded the Johnny Wakefield Trophy at the BRDC Annual Awards for setting the fastest race lap of the year at Silverstone, the DHL Fastest Lap Award, and was voted Driver of the Year by all the team principals. More rule changes came in 2010 with the banning of in-race refuelling, necessitating enlarged fuel tanks in the cars, and the introduction of a new points system that gave points for the top 10 finishes instead of the top 8 and gave more weight to race wins. Red Bull's car, the RB6, which Vettel christened as Luscious Liz, was an evolution of the RB5 and now included an exhaust-blown diffuser, which put Vettel in good stead to make another challenge for the title. That year also saw the surprise return of Michael Schumacher to Formula 1, allowing Vettel to now race alongside his hero and race of champions partner. Vettel qualified on pole at the season opener at Bahrain and was comfortably leading the race until he lost two cylinders halfway through and was passed by the Ferraris of Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa and then Lewis Hamilton and finished fourth. He got pole again in Melbourne and again was comfortably leading until suffering a front left brake failure at Ascari on lap 26. Having already lost 38 points in the first two rounds, he qualified third at Sepang, behind Weber and Nico Rosberg, but passed both of them at the start and went on to finally take his first win of the season, which put him third in the Drivers' Championship, tied of Alonso and two points behind Massa. His third pole in four races came at Shanghai, but he was passed by Weber at the start and also Alonso who jumped it, and he then lost several places pitting for intermediate tyres early on and nearly hit Hamilton in the pit lane, and only managed to recover to sixth and dropped to fifth in the Drivers' Championship. He qualified second behind Weber at Barcelona, and a slow pit stop meant he was passed by Hamilton, and then later had brake problems and pitted again and was passed by Alonso, but a late race tyre blowout for Hamilton meant he finished third and jumped back up to third in the Drivers' Championship. At Monaco, Vettel qualified third behind Weber and Robert Kubica, and passed Kubica at the start and finished in second, and jumped to second in the Drivers' Championship, tied on points with Weber. Vettel was given a new chassis at Istanbul, which he christened Randy Mandy, and it was here that the first major point of tension came between him and Weber. Weber got his third consecutive pole position and Vettel was third, behind Hamilton. Vettel jumped Hamilton in the first pit stop phase and then went after Weber for the lead. Vettel pushed while Weber was in fuel saving mode and went for a move on the back straight on lap 40, but as he passed him, he turned in on him which destroyed Vettel's right rear wheel and made him do a double pirouette into the runoff, and Weber was able to carry on but had to pit for a new front wing and dropped behind both McLarens. Neither driver took responsibility, but the three main figures in the team, Christian Horner, Adrian Newey and Helmut Marko all sided with Vettel, and Weber kept his championship lead, but Vettel dropped to fifth. 
At the Canadian Grand Prix, unprecedented tyre degradation came in practice, and Vettel qualified third behind Weber and Hamilton, but started second as Weber got a five-place grid penalty for a gearbox change. He struggled with grading and dropped to fourth. He took pole at the European Grand Prix at Valencia and took a comfortable lights to flag victory while Weber was involved in a colossal accident with Heike Kovalainen on lap 9, and he leaped Frog Weber to go third in the Drivers' Championship. Another point of tension came at the British Grand Prix. Vettel and Weber were both running new front wings, but Vettel's broke off in FP3, and Weber, who had the last remaining one, was forced to give his to Vettel for qualifying, which allowed Vettel to take pole position from him, who was visibly angry in the press conference afterwards. In the race, Weber passed Vettel at Cops at the start, who was then hit by Hamilton and got a puncture and dropped to last. Vettel eventually recovered to 7th, pulling off some 14 overtakes, while Weber won the race and famously said over the radio, fantastic guys, not bad for a number 2 driver, cheers, and they swapped places in the driver's championship. The new front wing was put back on both cars for the German Grand Prix, and Vettel got pole, but was passed by Alonso and Massa at the start, who had largely been out of the fight at the front for the past few races, and kept with them but finished third, but was almost given the win after Ferrari were investigated and later fined for using team orders to give Alonso the win. Vettel took pole in Hungary by four tenths from Weber and was storming ahead in the race until a safety car came out and he pitted and was passed by Weber and was then given a drive through penalty for falling more than 10 car lengths behind the safety car. He gestured and gesticulated while going down the pit lane and finished third behind Alonso while Weber won, but passed Jensen Button to go third in the Drivers' Championship. Vettel qualified fourth at Spa behind Kubica, Hamilton and Weber. Weber went into anti-stall at the start, and after rain forced most drivers off at the bus stop chicane on the first lap, Vettel found himself in third behind Button and Hamilton. He attempted to pass Button at the bus stop chicane on lap 16, but caught a wet patch and hit Button's side pod, destroying his radiator. Vettel lost his front wing and immediately pitted and dropped to 12th, and was then given a drive through penalty and dropped to 14th. While trying to make up lost ground, he passed former teammate Vitantonio Liuzzi at the bus stop chicane on lap 26, but got a left rear puncture from him and missed the pit lane entrance and had to do a whole lap on three wheels before pitting and dropping to 20th, and eventually finished in 16th, but was now some 28 points behind Weber and 31 points behind Hamilton. Vettel qualified 6th at the low downforce Monza, last of the front runners, but gained places from Weber having another poor start and Hamilton crashing out on the first lap and survived a scare with the engine mid-race and finished 4th, but dropped back down to 5th in the Drivers' Championship. At Singapore, Vettel qualified 2nd behind Alonso and ran on Alonso's tail for the entire race and finished there, while Hamilton crashed out again after making contact with Weber who was 3rd, and he jumped to 4th in the Drivers' Championship and was now only 1 point behind Hamilton, but 21 points behind Weber. Vettel emulated his performance from Suzuka in 2009 and took pole and comfortably won the race and jumped to 3rd in the Drivers' Championship, tied on points of Alonso. He took pole again at the inaugural Korean Grand Prix. Torrential rain meant the race started behind the safety car and was red flagged on lap 3, and the green flag didn't wave until lap 18. Weber immediately crashed out from second and took out Rosberg which brought out another safety car, and Vettel continued to lead until the engine died on lap 46, which gave the win to Alonso, and he dropped a fourth in the Drivers' Championship and Alonso took the lead. At the penultimate round at Interlagos, Vettel qualified second behind a shock pole position from rookie Nico Hülkenberg, but easily passed him at the start and led the entire race to take his fourth win of the season, and with Weber second, Red Bull secured their first Constructors' Championship. Going into the final round at Abu Dhabi, there were a record-breaking four drivers in contention for the title. Alonso leading on 246 points, Weber second on 238, Vettel third on 231, and Hamilton fourth on 222. Vettel put himself in the best position by getting pole, with Hamilton second, Alonso third and Weber fifth. He led at the start and controlled the race from the front, and early on Weber and Alonso pitted and ended up behind Vitaly Petrov, who had pitted during the safety car at the start of the race and did not need to pit again. With Vettel leading, Alonso needed to finish 5th or higher and Weber needed to win to be champion, but neither of them were able to pass Petrov and make any progress and eventually finished 7th and 8th, and by winning the race Vettel took the driver's title by 4 points from Alonso, having never led the championship at any point until crossing the finish line, and also broke Hamilton's record for youngest Formula 1 world champion in history by just under 6 months, aged 23 years 134 days, a record he still holds. 
He once again ended the year by partnering up with Michael Schumacher for the Race of Champions, and was knocked out of the semi-finals of the eponymous tournament by Felipe Albuquerque, having beaten Schumacher in the quarter-finals, but with Schumacher defeated Jason Plato and Andy Prio of Team Great Britain in the final of the Nations Cup to win it for the fourth year in a row. 2010 was a much-deserved title, but it did not come easy. Vettel had lost at least 63 points from mechanical problems, and also at least 50 from his own errors. He was helped, however, by the fact that his main rivals either had less competitive machinery or made an equally large number of errors themselves. He was dominant in qualifying, getting 10 pole positions from 19 races, but only three times was able to convert that into a win, and there were cracks forming in the team as his relationship with Weber started to deteriorate. For his triumph, he was voted German Sports Personality of the Year, also Sport International Racing Driver of the Year, and European Sports Person of the Year by the International Sports Press Association. Yet more rule changes came in 2011. Pirelli replaced Bridgestone as the official tyre supplier and was asked to deliberately produce high degradation tyres to diversify race strategies and spice up the racing. There had been numerous complaints about the lack of overtaking in recent years as well, so DRS was introduced, and Kurs, which had been trialled by a few teams in 2009, but was brought back and used by every team except Virgin and HRT. The RB7, which Vettel christened Kinky Kylie, was largely the same as the RB6, but had an even more innovative off-throttle exhaust blown diffuser, which essentially gave continuous downforce no matter how fast you were driving. Vettel was the only driver to visit the Pirelli factory before the start of the season, and it showed, as he got pole at the season-opening Australian Grand Prix by eight tenths from Lewis Hamilton, where he also signed a three-year extension to his Red Bull contract to the end of 2014, and won the race by over 20 seconds. He got pole again at Sepang, though only by a tenth this time, and won the race by a relatively narrow three seconds from Jensen Button. His third consecutive pole position came at Shanghai, by 7 tenths from Button, but he had a poor start and dropped a third behind Button and Hamilton, and later regained the lead, despite being blocked by Button in the pit lane, but was passed by Hamilton on fresher tyres in the dying stages of the race and finished second. At the Turkish Grand Prix, Vettel crashed in the rain at Turn 8 in FP1, his first self-inflicted trip to the barriers since the Monaco Grand Prix in 2009 but despite that, took pole by four tenths from Webber and won the race by nine seconds from him, and already had more than a race wins lead over Hamilton in the Drivers' Championship. Webber broke the qualifying deadlock by taking pole at Barcelona, with Vettel two tenths behind in second, and Vettel passed Webber at the start, but Alonso passed both of them. However, Vettel passed him in the pit stops and won the race by just half a second from Hamilton, and also demonstrated his superiority over Webber, who was 48 seconds behind in fourth. Vettel got pole by four tenths at Monaco and beat Alonso by just over a second to take his first win in the Principality and officially complete one of the three requirements to achieve the Triple Crown of Motorsport. He crashed into the Wall of Champions in FP1 at Montreal, but took pole once again, and in a race run in torrential rain with numerous safety cars and a two-hour red flag period, comfortably led until the track dried out towards the end. Button had been last at one point but was closing down on Vettel in the dying laps, and on the final lap Vettel caught a wet patch at turn 6 and ran wide and gave Button the lead and the win. He bounced back from this error by taking another pole at Valencia and winning the race by 11 seconds from Alonso. At the British Grand Prix, off-throttle exhaust blown diffusers were banned following a protest from teams not running it that it counted as a movable aerodynamic device. Despite this, Red Bull occupied the front row in qualifying with Weber on pole and Vettel second. Vettel took the lead at the start, but a slow pit stop meant he was passed by Alonso and later took a third stop to get him in clean air. Weber was all over him in the final stint and ignored team orders to not pass him, but failed in his attempts, and Vettel finished second, 16 seconds behind Alonso, whose Ferrari never had an off-throttle exhaust blown diffuser. After the race, the ban ended up being lifted due to various concessions having to be made to different teams depending on the needs of their individual engines. Vettel qualified third for his home race at the Nürburgring, with Weber on pole and Hamilton second. He was passed by Alonso at the start and then spun at turn 10 later on and lost touch with him, and was then passed by Massa in the first pit stops, but repassed him when they both pitted on the final lap and finished off the podium for the first time that year in fourth. He bounced back though by getting pole at Hungary, but ran wide at turn 3 on lap 5 on a wet track and was passed by Hamilton, and was then passed by Button in the first pit stop phase when the track dried. 
He later gained second place after Hamilton mistakenly pitted for intermediate tyres and entered the summer break with an 85 point lead over Webber. At Spa, Vettel got pole by half a second from Hamilton and before the race was seen arguing with Pirelli Motorsport director Paul Hembury to allow extra sets of tyres to be used in the race, as those used in qualifying had all blistered, which many other drivers wanted as well. Hembury simply responded by saying that teams could only get extra tyres if they had crashed, and if they wanted, they could adjust their camber settings, but would have to start from the pit lane. Nico Rosberg passed Vettel at the start, but he took the lead back when DRS was activated on lap 3 and went on to win yet another race. He took the 25th pole position of his career at Monza, by half a second from Hamilton. He was passed by Alonso at the start, but took the lead back with an extremely ballsy move around the outside of Curva Grande on lap 4 where he put two wheels on the grass, and never looked back and took another win. Singapore was the first race of the year where he could clinch the title, if he won with Button and Webber third or lower and Alonso fourth or lower. He took pole again by four tenths, despite only completing a single run in Q3 and led every lap of the race to win, but did not clinch the title as Button was second. At Suzuka, Vettel needed to score just one point to win the championship. He secured his 12th pole position of the season by just 9 thousandths from Button, and the two nearly collided at the start, but Button leapfrogged Vettel in the first pit stop phase, and Alonso then leapfrogged him in the second, and he was unable to get past and finish third, but still successfully defended the title with four races remaining, and broke Alonso's record for the youngest double world champion in Formula 1 history by just under a year, aged 24 years 99 days, another record he still holds. Vettel qualified second at Yongam, behind Hamilton, who achieved the first non-Red Bull pole position of the year, but passed him at the start and took another win, and with Webber finishing third, Red Bull successfully defended the Constructors' title. With both titles wrapped up, Vettel took pole at the inaugural Indian Grand Prix, led every lap and got fastest lap to achieve his first Grand Chelem. He crashed at Turn 1 in FP2 at Abu Dhabi, but still took pole, but then, exiting Turn 1, ran over the curves which caused a right rear tyre failure, so he crawled round to the pits to retire, his first retirement of the season. At the season finale at Interlagos, Vettel got pole yet again, but midway through the race complained of gearbox problems and was passed by Webber and finished second. He ended the season with a record-breaking 392 points, 122 ahead of runner-up Button, and then once again appeared in the Race of Champions, where he was beaten by teammate Schumacher in the quarter-finals of the eponymous tournament, but together they defeated Tom Christensen and Juho Hananen of Team Nordic in the final of the Nations Cup to win it for the fifth consecutive time. Vettel was an unstoppable force in 2011, with such dominance by a single driver being seen only a handful of times before. In 19 races he got a record-breaking 15 pole positions and converted 9 of these into wins, took 2 other wins elsewhere and finished on the podium all but twice. He was streaks ahead of Webber, who had beaten him just twice, despite having an equally dominant car, and did still make errors, with more crashes and spins than in 2010, but as he was so fast elsewhere this had little effect on his form and title chances. He was named Autosport International Driver of the Year for the second year in a row, was voted Driver of the Year by the team principals for the second time, was honoured by the Grand Prix de l'Académie des Sports for being double the consecutive world champion at the age of 24, winner of 11 Grand Prix out of 19, and was honoured by his native Germany by being awarded the Silberner Lobbyerblatt, or Silver Bay Laurel Leaf, the highest sports award in the country, given to successful athletes of exemplary character. For 2012, off-throttle exhaust-blown diffusers were banned outright, and new height restrictions on the nose cone meant that many teams had a stepped nose design, including the RB8, which Vessel christened Abbey. Lap times in pre-season testing were not as good as the team were expecting, and it was clear they would not have as easy a time as they had had in 2011 in the hunt for their third consecutive drivers' and constructors' titles. At the season opening Australian Grand Prix, Vettel spun off at Turn 5 in FP3 and qualified 6th behind Webber after not completing any qualifying simulations. His race pace was better and he managed to finish 2nd, almost 2 seconds behind winner Jensen Button. He qualified 6th again at Sepang, but was promoted to 5th following a grid penalty for Kimi Raikkonen. The race started in the rain, which quickly became torrential and meant the race was red flagged on lap 9, with Vettel in 6th. After the race restarted, Vettel got up to 4th, and when lapping the HRT of Narain Kartikeyan at Turn 9 on lap 47, got his left rear tyre clipped by Kartikeyan's front wing and received a puncture. 
He gave the middle finger to Carter Kane as he drove past and then pitted and dropped out of the points and finished 11th. When speaking to British media after the race, Vettel said, like on normal roads you have idiots driving around, it seems there is also one driving here. And when speaking to German media, referred to Carter Kane as a Gurke, German for cucumber, which is used as a slang term along with the verb umgurken to refer to somebody ambling around aimlessly getting in everyone's way. Carter Kane hit back by calling Vettel a crybaby and unprofessional, and later insisted they put it behind them and focus on their own battles at the opposite ends of the grid. At the Chinese Grand Prix, Vettel was shockingly eliminated in Q2 and qualified 11th. He dropped to 14th at the start, but gained places in the race and got up to 3rd, and was passed by Hamilton and Weber in the closing laps and finished 5th. He had his first incident-free weekend of the year in Bahrain, where he got pole and survived challenges from Kimi Räikkönen and Roman Grosjean to take his first win of the year and jumped from 5th to 1st in the Drivers' Championship. At Barcelona, Vettel made Q3 but did not set a time in order to save tyres and started 7th. He was passed by Schumacher at the start, and after Schumacher later crashed out was given a drive-through penalty for ignoring yellow flags, and then damaged his front wing and had to replace it and finish 6th. At Monaco, Red Bull came under fire as several teams protested the appearance of two holes in the car's floor, which was supposed to be illegal. Vettel once again made Q3 and did not set a time in order to save tyres and started 9th. He jumped up to 6th at the start and eventually finished 4th, with only 6 seconds separating the top 6 cars, but dropped behind Fernando Alonso in the Drivers' Championship. Before the Canadian Grand Prix, the FIA banned the holes in Red Bull's floor and forced them to remove them, as well as a pair of holes in the front wheel axles that were considered movable aerodynamic devices. This had little effect on the car's performance however, as Vettel took pole by three tenths from Hamilton, but had high tyre degradation and lost the lead to him and Alonso in the first round of pit stops. He pitted again late in the race after a long second stint and dropped to fifth, but passed Alonso who'd stayed out to finish fourth, and dropped to third in the Drivers' Championship. He took pole at Valencia and stormed away in the early stages of the race by as much as a second per lap and had a 20 second lead when a mid-race safety car bunched up the field, but then suffered an alternator failure which allowed Alonso to take an emphatic win and Vettel to drop to fourth in the Drivers' Championship. At the British Grand Prix, where Red Bull ran a special one-off Wings for Life livery consisting of thousands of photos of charity patrons, he qualified fourth in the rain and finished in third behind Alonso and Weber and went back up to third in the Drivers' Championship. For his home race, now back at Hockenheim, he qualified second behind Alonso and in the second half of the race was passed by Button and repassed him at the hairpin on the penultimate lap but went off the track while doing so and was given a 20 second time penalty which dropped him from second to fifth and he was now 44 points behind Alonso in the championship. At Hungary, he qualified third and was passed by Button at the start and finished fourth and went into the summer break third in the Drivers' Championship, two points behind Weber and 42 points behind Alonso. At Spa, he was knocked out in Q2 for the second time that year and qualified 11th, but started 10th as Weber was demoted to 12th. He was given a major lifeline in the championship as Roman Grosjean triggered a five-car pile-up at the start which included Alonso and Hamilton, and although he dropped to 12th in all the mayhem, stormed through in the race to finish second behind Button, and jumped up to second in the Drivers' Championship and was now 24 points behind Alonso. He struggled for pace in practice at the low downforce Monza, and the car broke down in FP3. He qualified 6th but started 5th following a grid penalty for Paul de Resta. He passed Schumacher early on, but later in the race, in a role reversal of the previous year, pushed Alonso onto the grass when trying to pass him at Curva Grande and was given a drive through penalty and dropped to ninth, and then suffered his second alternator failure of the year with six laps remaining, and with Hamilton winning, Alonso finishing third and Raikkonen finishing fifth, now dropped to fourth in the Drivers' Championship, 39 points behind Alonso. At Singapore, he qualified third behind Hamilton and passed to Maldonado, but passed Maldonado at the start and then inherited the lead from Hamilton after his gearbox died to win his first race since Bahrain, and jumped back up to second in the Drivers' Championship, now 29 points behind Alonso. He then got his first pole since Valencia at Suzuka, and at the start Raikkonen took out Alonso and Grosjean took out Weber, and Vettel went on to take his fourth win in four years at Suzuka, and with fastest lap got his second Grand Chelem, and was now just four points behind Alonso. 
Weber got pole at Yongam with Vettel second, but he passed Weber at the start and led the entire race to take his third win in a row and 25th of his career, and with Alonso third took the lead in the Drivers' Championship for the first time since Monaco. He took pole at the Indian Grand Prix and comfortably won the race by 9 seconds from Alonso and now had a 13 point lead in the championship. Vettel qualified third at Abu Dhabi, however, he stopped on his inlap and was then excluded from qualifying as the FIA could not extract a 1 litre fuel sample from the fuel tank, so he had to start from the back of the grid, but instead started from the pit lane as the team made setup changes in order to facilitate overtaking. However, he put on a champion's drive as he worked his way through the back markers in the early laps, but then pitted when an early safety car came out as he had damaged his front wing passing Bruno Senna, and then damaged it further swerving to avoid Daniel Ricciardo and going through a DRS board and dropped back to last again. He then climbed through again and got himself up to second, and after pitting again dropped to fourth, but late in the race passed Jensen Button to finish third after starting 23rd and got fastest lap behind Alonso and Raikkonen, and his lead over Alonso dropped to 10 points. At the inaugural running of the United States Grand Prix at the Circuit of the Americas, which was Vettel's 100th Grand Prix, he took pole and led most of the race, but towards the end was chased down by Hamilton, and while lapping his best friend Narain Carter Kane on lap 42, caught him at the S's in the first sector where you can't pass, which allowed Hamilton to close up to him and pass him on the back straight and take the lead and the win, with Alonso 40 seconds behind Vettel in third, and Red Bull won their third consecutive Constructors title. The driver's title went down to the wire between Vettel and Alonso at the season finale at Interlagos. Vettel had the advantage of a 13 point lead, which meant if he didn't beat Alonso he could finish anywhere as long as Alonso was off the podium. Vettel qualified 4th, and Alonso was down in 7th. However, Vettel had a slightly poor start and was pushed into the wall at the center rest by Weber and dropped to 7th, behind Alonso. At Dashida de Lago, he was then hit by Bruno Senna and spun round and was hit by him again and rapidly dropped to last. He had taken a big hit to the left hand side pod and had lost a lot of the floor, but the suspension was undamaged and the radiator was intact, so he was able to carry on, but had lost a lot of downforce. As with Abu Dhabi, he worked his way through the back markers as rain started coming down, and after pitting for intermediates and then for slicks again had climbed up to fifth, just behind Alonso, when the safety car came out. After the restart, he was passed by Kamui Kobayashi and then Alonso's teammate Massa. Rain came down again, and Vettel pitted for intermediates, but as his radio had now died, the team were caught by surprise, which cost him a lot of time. After everyone else did the same, he got up to 7th, with Alonso now in 2nd, and was sportingly let through by Schumacher, who was in his final race in Formula 1 to 6th. Paul de Resta crashed out with two laps remaining which brought out the safety car again and prevented Alonso from critically challenging Button for the lead, and Vettel beat him by four points to take his third consecutive driver's title, becoming one of just nine drivers at that time to win three, and only the third to win three consecutively, and became the youngest triple world champion, aged 25 years 145 days. He ended the year as ever by partnering up with the now retired Schumacher for the race of champions, and was knocked out by Roman Grosjean of Team France in the quarterfinals of the eponymous tournament, but with Schumacher defeated Grosjean and teammate Sebastian Ogier in the final of the Nations Cup to win it for the sixth consecutive time. The 2012 triumph had been Vettel's most difficult one yet. He had breezed to it in 2011, but as of 2010 did not have an outright dominant car and suffered several setbacks in the form of mechanical problems and his own errors. He lost at least 30 points from mechanical problems, as much as 20 from accidents that weren't his fault, and another 20 from his own errors. But as of 2010 was helped by the fact that his main rivals had all these problems too. He managed only a single win in the first half of the season, but in the second half came back with a vengeance and put on masterful performances at Yas Marina in Interlagos, and with major lifelines at Spa and Suzuka took a much deserved third title. That year, he was awarded the DHL Fastest Lap Award for the second time, and was named European Sports Person of the Year for the second time, this time by the Polish press agency. Only minor rule changes were introduced in 2013, and so Red Bull's car, the RB9, which Vettel christened Hungry Heidi, looked largely the same as the RB8. Vettel got polled by four tenths from Weber at the season opening Australian Grand Prix, but with Pirelli's new tyre compounds had incredibly heavy tyre degradation and finished third behind Raikkonen and Alonso. Vettel took pole again at Sepang by almost a second from Felipe Massa, but was passed by Weber during the first round of pit stops. 
Later in the race, after the two drivers had created a gap over their rivals, the pit wall ordered them to turn their engines down, conserve tyres and maintain position. Vessel however started taunting Weber over the radio, and perhaps because he had already defeated him four years in a row, felt confident enough to disobey this order, and passed Weber at turn 4 on lap 46, with the two nearly colliding down the start-finish straight. Weber then unsuccessfully tried to take the lead back on lap 47, and Vettel went on to win by 4 seconds. A clearly furious Weber nearly boycotted the podium ceremony, and in the cooldown room famously said Multi-21 Seb, Multi-21, which was the codename for the order that Vettel had disobeyed. During the podium interviews, a very sheepish Vettel described it as close wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, and Weber said, I want to race as well, but in the end the team made a decision, which we always say before the race is probably how it's going to be. We look after the tyres, get the cars to the end, and in the end Seb made his own decisions today and will have protection and that's the way it goes. The team were understandably furious about what had transpired as despite getting their first 1-2 finish in six races, Vettel had needlessly risked a double retirement, and it got to the point where Red Bull CEO Dietrich Mateschitz intervened and wanted a written and oral account from Weber of exactly what happened. The team wanted to sanction Vettel, until his lawyers intervened and threatened legal action if they did so. Vettel initially apologised numerous times to Weber and the team, but before the Chinese Grand Prix recanted these and explained that he felt Weber did not deserve to win and had no regrets and did it as an indirect form of revenge for Weber's perceived lack of sportsmanship and support in the past, citing Silverstone 2011, where Weber himself disobeyed orders to maintain position, though that time was unsuccessful in getting past, and Interlagos 2012, where he pushed Vettel into the wall at the start which led to Vettel receiving his near-terminal crash damage, and later in the race feigned ignorance when given the order multi 1-2 when Vettel caught up to him and had to be very bluntly told to let Sebastian go before conceding position. At Shanghai, Vettel did not set a time in Q3 in order to save tyres and started 9th, while Weber was knocked out in Q2 and then sent to the back of the grid after running out of fuel as Vettel had done in Abu Dhabi in 2012. Vettel made progress in the race and missed out on the podium by just two tenths of a second while Weber lost a wheel early on. Vettel qualified second behind Rosberg at Sakia but passed him on lap 3 and won the race by 9 seconds from Raikkonen. He qualified third behind Rosberg and Hamilton at Barcelona and passed Hamilton at the start but eventually finished fourth behind Alonso, Raikkonen and Massa. He qualified behind both Mercedes again at Monaco but passed Hamilton during a mid-race safety car and finished second. At Montreal, he took pole and won the race by 15 seconds from Alonso, and despite it only being his third win of the year, was very audibly booed by spectators during the podium ceremony. He qualified third for the British Grand Prix, where Weber announced his retirement at the end of 2013, once again behind both Mercedes, and passed Rosberg at the start, and during the race, Pirelli's decision to use ultra-high degradation tyres that year caught up with them, as early on six different drivers suffered tyre blowouts, one of which was Hamilton, which gave Vettel the lead. However, he then pulled over on the start-finish straight on lap 42 after the gearbox died, much to the delight of the British fans. The 2012 spec tyres were reintroduced from the German Grand Prix onwards, and at the Nürburgring Vettel qualified second behind Hamilton. He took the lead at the start and won by just one second from Raikkonen, taking his first ever home victory and the 30th win of his career. He qualified second behind Hamilton again in Hungary, but got stuck behind Jensen Button after the first round of pit stops and damaged his front wing trying to pass him, and was passed by Raikkonen in the next round of pit stops and finished third, and went into the summer break with a 38 point lead over Raikkonen. After the summer break, Vettel began a record breaking streak of 9 consecutive Grand Prix victories. He qualified second in the rain behind Hamilton at Spa, and passed him down the Kemmel Strait on the first lap and won by 17 seconds from Alonso. At Monza, it was announced that he would be joined at Red Bull in 2014 by Toro Rosso driver and Red Bull junior Daniel Ricciardo. He got polled by two tenths from Weber and won by six seconds from Alonso. He set only a single time in Q3 at Singapore, but still got pole, and led every lap and then got fastest lap and won by over 30 seconds, achieving his third Grand Chelem. He then achieved a second consecutive Grand Chelem at Yongam, the first driver to do so since Jim Clark 50 years earlier. Weber took pole at Suzuka with Vettel second. Grosjean took the lead at the start, but Vettel managed to repass him in the second stint and won by 7 seconds from Weber. At the Indian Grand Prix, 
Vettel took pole by 7 tenths of a second and ran unchallenged in the race and won by nearly 30 seconds to take his third consecutive win at Bud, but more importantly, secured his fourth consecutive driver's title and Red Bull's fourth consecutive constructor's title with three races remaining. Before returning to the pit lane, Vettel did donuts on the start finish straight and then bowed before the car. He was then reprimanded by the FIA for not returning to the pit lane in a timely manner and Red Bull were fined $25,000 for failing to instruct him to do so. Vettel qualified second at Abu Dhabi, behind Weber, but passed him at the start and led the rest of the race to win by 31 seconds. He got pole at Kota and once again comfortably led and won by 6 seconds, and with his 8th consecutive win broke Alberto Ascari and Michael Schumacher's joint records from 1953 and 2004. At the season finale at Interlagos, he took pole by 6 tenths in the rain and won by 11 seconds to take his 9th consecutive win and ended the season with a record-breaking 397 points, 155 ahead of Alonso. Vettel had returned to his 2011 form in 2013. In the first half of the season with the high degradation tyres, it was relatively even with Mercedes and Ferrari, but after the 2012 compounds came back, he stamped down his authority and left no stone unturned. He made almost no mistakes all year, once again blew Weber out of the water, but also showed his ruthless streak with his actions at Sepang, which have hung over him ever since. He matched Schumacher's record from 2004 of 13 wins in a season, but was slightly less dominant in qualifying with only 9 pole positions. He was voted Driver of the Year by the team principals for the third time, awarded the DHL Fastest Lap Award for the third time, named European Sports Person of the Year by the Polish Press Agency for the second year in a row, and was named BBC Overseas Sports Personality of the Year. He was on top of the world, but the season had been incredibly uneventful, and he had been booed on the podium at at least six different races, and it was clear things needed to change. Such change did come in 2014. The 2.4 litre naturally aspirated V8 engines in use since 2006 were replaced with 1.6 litre turbocharged V6 hybrids, and Kurs was replaced with the more autonomous ERS. DRS remained, but major revisions to the car's aerodynamic profiles created a drastic drop in downforce, and lap times dropped by about 3 seconds per lap. The drivers were now allowed to pick personal driver numbers, and Vettel chose number 5, though as defending champion his car still carried number 1 on it. As how the rule changes in 2009 turned the grid on its head, in Red Bull's favour, did also the changes in 2014. Red Bull had serious problems in pre-season testing, as the RB10, which Vettel christened Susie, was constantly breaking down, particularly the new hybrid Renault power unit, and wasn't setting the timesheets alight on the rare occasions it wasn't, and it was clear Vettel and Red Bull would need to pull something remarkable out of the hat to defend their titles once again. At the season opening Australian Grand Prix, Vettel was knocked out in Q2, with more recurring engine problems, and started 12th, while Ricardo was on the front row. He went backwards at the start, and lasted just three laps before the engine died, having not completed so short a race distance since Abu Dhabi in 2011. Ricardo finished second, but was then disqualified for exceeding the fuel flow limit. At Sepang, Vettel qualified a far more encouraging second in the rain, just five hundredths behind Hamilton, but was passed by Rosberg and Ricardo at the start, though he took third back from Ricardo on lap four and stayed there for the rest of the race, while Ricardo retired with seven laps to go. In Bahrain, he was knocked out in Q2 and started 10th after Ricardo qualified 3rd, but was demoted to 13th for an unsafe pit release in Sepang. His DRS was faulty, and early in the race he was ordered to let Ricardo pass and eventually finished 6th while Ricardo was 4th. Another wet qualifying session came at Shanghai, and Vettel qualified 3rd, behind Ricardo and Hamilton. He passed Ricardo at the start, but was passed by Alonso in the first round of pit stops and later Rosberg and Ricardo and finished 20 seconds behind him in 5th, and after 4 races had finally broken the top 5 in the Drivers' Championship. Vettel missed FP2 at Barcelona due to a faulty wiring loom, and made Q3 in qualifying but did not set a time after the gearbox died in his outlap and qualified 10th, and was then demoted to 15th for changing the gearbox. He had a strong race however and managed to finish 4th with fastest lap, 25 seconds behind Ricardo, who started 3rd and finished 3rd, and he jumped up to 4th in the Drivers' Championship. He qualified 4th at Monaco and passed Ricardo at the start, but his turbocharger died on lap 3 and he then pitted and got stuck in 1st gear. The turbocharger then came back to life, but he pitted again to retire and dropped to 6th in the Drivers' Championship. 
At Montreal, he qualified third and passed Hamilton at the start, who repassed him on lap 10. He had several near misses with other drivers during the race, and after Hamilton retired and Sergio Perez and Felipe Massa crashed right behind him on the final lap eventually finished third, whereas Ricardo managed to pass both Vettel and a hobbling Rosberg to take his first win, Red Bull's first win of the year, and the first non-Mercedes win of the year, and Vettel went back up to fifth in the Drivers' Championship. At the first running of the Austrian Grand Prix since 2002, Vettel was knocked out in Q2 for the third time that year and started 12th. He lost drive on the first lap, which suddenly came back on the second, but he was now a lap down and gave up and retired on lap 35. He qualified second at Silverstone, but dropped to fifth at the start, but proved his racecraft had not sullied, as later in the race he was involved in a two-lap battle with his old rival Fernando Alonso and eventually passed him around the outside of Cops and finished fifth, while Ricardo had done a one-stop strategy and finished third, and Vettel dropped back to sixth in the Drivers' Championship. For his home race, now back at Hockenheim, he qualified 6th, but after Felipe Massa and Kevin Magnussen collided at the start and Ricardo was forced off track, jumped up to 3rd, but was eventually passed by Hamilton who had crashed in qualifying and finished 4th. He qualified 2nd at Hungary, but in a wet race dropped to 3rd at the start, and after an ill-timed pit stop during an early safety car dropped to 7th while Ricardo took the lead. He stayed out during a second safety car and got up to fourth, but after the track started drying out did a 360 degree spin exiting the final corner and very narrowly missed the pit wall, but had flat spotted his tyres and pitted and dropped to 13th. He eventually finished 7th, but Ricardo took his second win of the year and Vettel went into the summer break 6th in the Drivers' Championship with 88 points, 43 behind Ricardo in 3rd. Vettel had an engine failure in FP2 at Spa, but avoided a grid penalty by switching to an old power unit and qualified third in the rain, as ever behind both Mercedes. They both collided on the second lap which gave Hamilton a puncture and moved Vettel up to second, who was then passed by Ricardo on lap 5 but kept second after Rosberg pitted for a new front wing. As the race went on, he got passed by Rosberg, Bottas and Raikkonen and finished fifth, while Ricardo won yet another race. He qualified 8th at Monza, with Ricardo 9th, a circuit Red Bull had always been weak at, and got up to 5th at the start while Ricardo dropped to 12th. He ran in 5th for the whole race until eventually being passed by Ricardo towards the end and finished 6th. Vettel had another engine failure in FP1 at Singapore, but once again avoided a grid penalty by switching to an old engine, and qualified 4th and finished 2nd, and jumped up to 5th in the Drivers' Championship. At Suzuka, Vettel shocked both Red Bull and the F1 world by announcing he had fulfilled a childhood dream by signing a three-year contract with Ferrari for 2015, replacing Fernando Alonso. He had activated a performance clause in his contract that allowed him to leave Red Bull early if he was lower than third in the Drivers' Championship by September 30th, and his seat was taken by Toro Rosso driver Daniel Kvyat and Alonso went back to McLaren. That Friday, his 8-year-old record for youngest driver to participate in a Grand Prix weekend was also beaten by a 17-year-old Max Verstappen. Vettel qualified 9th, with Ricardo 6th, and in a race afflicted by Typhoon Fanfone, used his wet weather skills to get himself up to 3rd before the race was stopped early following Jules Bianchi's eventually fatal accident, and he also failed to win at Suzuka for the first time in his Formula 1 career, but he jumped up to 4th in the Drivers' Championship. At the inaugural Russian Grand Prix, Vettel was knocked out in Q2 for the fourth time that year and started 10th, but made up ground in the early laps and eventually finished 8th, just behind Ricardo, but dropped back to 5th in the Drivers' Championship. He took his 6th power unit of the season at Kota and so started from the pit lane and climbed through to finish 7th and took fastest lap. He qualified 6th at Interlagos, with Ricardo 9th, but had a poor start and dropped to 8th, but eventually finished 5th, while Ricardo had only his second retirement of the year, and he moved back up to 4th in the Drivers' Championship. The season reached its conclusion at Abu Dhabi, where a controversial double points system was implemented. Vettel qualified 6th, with Ricardo 5th, but in a repeat of 2012 both drivers were excluded from qualifying for having illegally flexing front wings and were sent to the back of the grid, and then had to start from the pit lane for breaking Park Ferme rules to replace the rings. Ricardo made far better progress through the field as Vettel ironically got stuck behind Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg for most of the race and eventually finished 8th while Ricardo was 4th. Vettel ended the season 5th in the Drivers' Championship with 167 points, 61 points behind Ricardo in 3rd. 2014 was a disaster for Vettel, and remains one of the worst title defences in Formula 1 history. 
The Adrian Newey designed RB10 had perfectly sound aerodynamics from within the constraints of the 2014 regulations, but the Renault power unit was not very powerful and lacked torque, and combined with the much simplified diffusers meant the car had a very unstable rear end, whereas Vettel's driving style suited a car with a planted rear, which he was given in the V8 era with all of Newey's innovative diffuser designs. He didn't make many significant errors, nor did he have any accidents, but he failed to win any races or get any pole positions for the first time since 2007, and finished on the podium just four times, and also bore the brunt of most of the reliability problems, whereas Ricardo saw the podium eight times and won three races. They were never in competition with Mercedes, and Ricardo only beat them when they had off races, but at the start of the year Vettel was mostly battling once again with Ferrari. He got an edge on them in the second half, but then saw a resurgence from the Mercedes-powered Williams and ended up being beaten by Valtteri Bottas in the championship. He did however prove he was still a committed racer, with strong drives in Barcelona, Silverstone and Suzuka. He was also named Sportsman of the Year at the Laureus World Sports Awards. But still, he felt it was a good time to move on to other pastures and left the Red Bull family after 16 years together. Only minor changes were brought in 2015, but Vettel had a major one now being dressed in red and white. He christened Ferrari's car, the SF15T, as Eva, and as he was no longer a Red Bull driver, had a brand new helmet design that was a simple white with a strip of the German flag. At Albert Park, he qualified fourth, just ahead of new teammate Kimi Raikkonen, and he passed Felipe Massa during the pit stops and finished third, but finished over 30 seconds behind the Mercedes. During the post-race press conference, Nico Rosberg said he hoped they would get more of a fight from the other teams this year, and Vessel responded in jest by saying, Be honest, do you really hope so? Seriously? You finished 30 seconds ahead of us and you hope it's going to be closer? So you hope you slow down, is that what you're saying? He'd seem to have granted Rosberg's wish at Sepang, as he split the two Mercedes in qualifying, and when an early safety car came in the race, he decided to stay out in order to gain track position. He broke ahead when the race resumed and built up enough of a lead to eventually win by 9 seconds and take his 40th career victory and first win for Ferrari, and took second in the Drivers' Championship. At Shanghai, Vettel started third and finished third. He qualified second in Bahrain and managed to stay there until hitting a curb and breaking off his front wing and dropped to fifth, also dropping to third in the Drivers' Championship. He qualified third at Barcelona and passed Hamilton at the start but was then passed by him later in the race and finished back in third. At Monaco, he qualified third again, but passed Hamilton when he pitted during a late safety car and finished second. He had problems with the power unit in qualifying at Montreal and was knocked out in Q1 and qualified 16th, and then received a 5th place grid penalty for overtaking under red flags in FP3 and started 18th. He'd got up to 13th when he first pitted but had a slow stop and dropped back to last. He climbed back again and eventually finished 5th. He completed only four laps in FP1 in Austria before the gearbox died, but still qualified third, and was running there until having a slow pit stop and finished fourth. At Silverstone, he qualified a slightly disappointing sixth. He dropped to eighth at the start, then to ninth after an early safety car, but was back in sixth after the first round of pit stops, and when rain started coming later on, pitted at the perfect moment and managed to finish third. In the week before the Hungarian Grand Prix, Jules Bianchi, who had been in a coma for nine months, died. He was a Ferrari junior, and Ferrari president Luca de Montezemolo revealed that if the proposals to have teams run a third car from 2015 onwards had gone through, he would have been driving Ferrari's third car alongside Vettel and Raikkonen. Vettel qualified third, and after a very moving tribute to Bianchi was made on the grid, a chaotic race ensued in which Vettel took the lead at the start and led the entire race to take his second win of the season and 41st of his career, matching IS and Senna, while Hamilton had several offs and finished 6th and Rosberg got a puncture from Daniel Ricciardo while in 2nd and finished 8th. On the radio on his way back to the pit lane he said, Merci Jules, you will always be in our hearts and we know that sooner or later you would have been part of this team. He entered the summer break third in the Drivers' Championship, 21 points behind Rosberg and 42 points behind Hamilton. Vettel qualified only ninth for Ferrari's 900th Grand Prix at Spa, but started eighth. He made good progress early on and was up to sixth after making his only stop of the race. He stayed out during a mid-race virtual safety car and got up to third and attempted to run a very long stint to the end. 
Towards the end, he was being chased down by an unnaturally fast Roman Grosjean, whose Mercedes-powered Lotus had been granted Mercedes' enigmatic party mode, and on the penultimate lap, Vettel had a right rear tyre blowout on the Kemmel straight, and he drove round to the pits and was classified in 12th, his first non-points classification since the Italian Grand Prix in 2012. He was now 39 points behind Rosberg and 67 points behind Hamilton, and this had all but destroyed what little chances he still had of fighting for the championship. For his first home race with Ferrari, he qualified third, ahead of Rosberg but behind Raikkonen. However, Raikkonen stalled at the start and with Rosberg having a poor start and then breaking down later on, managed to finish second, 25 seconds behind Hamilton. In Singapore, Vettel took the first non-Mercedes pole position of the year, and his first pole position in almost two years, by a very convincing six tenths from Ricardo in second, and a second and a half faster than Hamilton and Rosberg in fifth and sixth. He comfortably led the race to take his third win of the year and fourth win at Marina Bay, and with Rosberg fourth and Hamilton retiring was now only 8 points behind Rosberg and 49 behind Hamilton. Vettel qualified fourth at Suzuka, and got up to second at the start but later fell behind Rosberg and finished third. He qualified fourth again at Sochi, and was passed by Raikkonen at the start, but after Rosberg retired, he repassed Raikkonen and passed Valtteri Bottas during the pit stops, managed to finish second, and overtook Rosberg to go second in the Drivers' Championship, but was 66 points behind Hamilton. Persistent rain in Austin meant qualifying at Kota was delayed to Sunday morning, and Vettel narrowly made it into Q2 after hitting the wall, and qualified fifth after Q3 was cancelled, but was given a 10-place grid penalty for using an additional power unit and started 13th. He gained six places on the first lap and eventually finished third, but with Hamilton winning the race, the title fight came to an end. At the first running of the Mexican Grand Prix since 1992, Vettel qualified third. He had a poor start, however, and got a puncture from Ricardo and dropped to last. He'd climbed up to 11th by lap 18, but then spun at turn 7 of flat spotted his tyres and dropped to 16th. He was only able to gain four places over the next 35 laps and then spun again at turn 7 on lap 53 but this time went into the barriers, the first time he'd crashed out of a race by himself in over six years. He started third and finished third at Interlagos, and at the season finale at Abu Dhabi, he mistakenly aborted his second run in Q1 and was eliminated and started 15th. He ran a long first stint which meant he rejoined in sixth after pitting and eventually finished fourth. He finished third in the Drivers' Championship with 278 points, 44 behind Rosberg and 103 behind Hamilton. And at the end of the year, he made his first appearance at the Race of Champions since 2012 following its cancellation in 2013 and teammate Michael Schumacher's skiing accident a few weeks later that has left him incapacitated and out of the public spotlight ever since, and he partnered up with Nico Hülkenberg to represent Germany in the Nations Cup, but they were defeated by Jason Plato and Andy Prio of Team England 1 in the final. In the race of champions itself, however, Vettel defeated Tom Christensen in the final to win it for the first time in seven attempts. After a difficult 2014, Vettel came back very strongly in 2015 in his first year with the Scuderia. He made the right decision in leaving Red Bull, as Ferrari had built a front-running car while Red Bull had drifted into the midfield. He was able to drive the car to its limits, massively outperforming teammate Raikkonen, but it unfortunately had an inferior engine and inferior aerodynamics to Mercedes, and despite his best efforts, was only able to beat them when they had an off day at Hungary, and the tropical climate of Southeast Asia exposed their propensity for high tyre degradation and engine temperatures in Sepang and Singapore. Seven times he started third behind both Mercedes, and another seven times he finished third behind both Mercedes. In the races where he started further back, he was able to storm through the field, but had off races such as Bahrain and Mexico, but even if he had enjoyed faultless reliability and driving across the year, the car was simply not fast enough to match Mercedes. But still, for his performances, he was named Driver of the Year at the Confata Giniato Motori Awards. Once again, very few rule changes were introduced for 2016, but Ferrari's car, the SF16H, which Vettel christened Margarita, in reference to Margarita of Savoy, looked quite different, and there was huge encouragement in pre-season testing as they were regularly topping the timesheets. At the season opening Australian Grand Prix, they were brought back to reality after Vettel qualified third and Raikkonen fourth in a controversial elimination style format, more than half a second behind the Mercedes. However, both drivers had lightning fast starts and got into first and second at turn one. Vettel was controlling the lead and kept it after the first round of pit stops until a huge crash between Fernando Alonso and Esteban Gutierrez red flagged the race. 
Vettel went on to a second set of super soft tyres, but Mercedes switched to mediums which they could finish the race on. Raikkonen retired shortly after the race restarted, and Vettel was forced to pit again and fell behind the Mercedes and finished third. In Bahrain, in the second and final running of the controversial elimination-style qualifying format, Vettel qualified third once again, half a second behind the Mercedes, but on the formation lap his engine blew up, and he failed to start a race for the first time in his Formula 1 career, ending an unbroken streak of 158 consecutive race starts that went all the way back to the Hungarian Grand Prix in 2007, and he dropped from third to sixth in the Drivers' Championship. At Shanghai, he qualified behind Raikkonen in fourth, but at the start, Daniel Kvyat dived down the inside of Vettel and forced him to turn into Raikkonen, which damaged Vettel's front wing and broke Raikkonen's off when he then hit Kvyat. Vettel dropped to eighth and Raikkonen dropped to the back. Vettel was able to recover though and eventually finished second, behind Rosberg and ahead of Kvyat himself, and jumped up to fourth in the Drivers' Championship. In the cooldown room after the race, Vettel confronted Kvyat and said he came in like a torpedo, and Kvyat responded by simply saying, well, that's racing, and the nickname has stuck ever since. At Sochi, Vettel qualified second, but was demoted to seventh for a gearbox change. However, he had another coming together with Kvyat at the start, as he was rear-ended by Kvyat at turn two, which pushed him into Kvyat's teammate Daniel Ricciardo, and he was then rear-ended by Kvyat again through turn three and was punted into the barriers, where he went on an expletive-laden rant over the radio and dropped a fifth in the Drivers' Championship. He qualified sixth at Barcelona, behind Raikkonen, but Hamilton and Rosberg took each other out at turn four at the start, which put them into contention for the win with Ricciardo and Max Verstappen, who had replaced Kvyat at Red Bull. He passed Raikkonen at the start, but went on to a three-stop strategy along with Ricardo, while Verstappen and Raikkonen stayed on a two-stop, which proved to be the right decision as Vettel finished third while Verstappen won on his debut with Red Bull, and also broke Vettel's records for youngest driver to lead a race, youngest driver to win a race, and youngest driver to score a podium, but Vettel still jumped to fourth in the Drivers' Championship. Ricardo made a risky lunge at Vettel late in the race which compelled Vettel to say over the radio, if I don't avoid that, he is just going straight into my car. Honestly, what are we doing? Racing or ping pong? He qualified fourth and finished fourth at Monaco, dropping to fifth in the Drivers' Championship, and at Montreal, qualified third, very narrowly missing out on pole, but had another strong start and took the lead at turn one. However, he then pitted during a virtual safety car and was passed by Hamilton and finished second, but jumped up to third in the Drivers' Championship. At the inaugural running of the European Grand Prix at Baku, Vettel qualified fourth but started third, but inherited second from Ricardo, who was on a poor strategy and finished there for the second race in a row. He qualified fourth in Austria but was demoted to ninth for another gearbox change. He ran a long first stint and was in the lead when he suffered a right rear tyre blowout on the start finish straight on lap 27 and crashed into the barriers. In FP1 at Silverstone, Vettel tested an experimental halo device on his car that was being trialled following several fatal accidents in single-seaters in recent years caused by inadequate cockpit protection, but he did not have good words to say about it, saying it had a negative impact on visibility. He then had a gearbox failure in FP3 and qualified 6th but was demoted to 11th after having to replace it again. He made little progress in the race and was only able to finish 9th, and received a 5 second time penalty and 2 penalty points on his FIA super license for forcing Felipe Massa off the track when passing him, but still remained in 9th, and dropped to 5th in the Drivers' Championship. At Hungary, he qualified 5th but passed Verstappen on strategy and finished 4th, and at the return of his home race at Hockenheim he qualified 6th, and passed Raikkonen at the start and finished 5th, and went into the summer break 5th in the Drivers' Championship with 120 points, 2 behind Raikkonen and 13 behind Ricardo. He qualified 4th at Spa, and along with Raikkonen passed Verstappen at the start, but Verstappen then hit Raikkonen who in turn hit Vettel and they all dropped to last. Vettel managed to recover from this and finished 6th and moved up to 4th in the Drivers' Championship. At Monza, he qualified 3rd and passed Hamilton at the start but was inevitably passed by him later on and finished in 3rd. He started at the back in Singapore after receiving a 5-place grid penalty for yet another gearbox change, as well as a 20-place grid penalty for using a new power unit, but stormed his way through the field and finished 5th and was voted Driver of the Day. At Sepang, he qualified 5th and had a strong start but hit Rosberg at Turn 1 which broke off his front left wheel and dropped to 5th in the Drivers' Championship. He qualified 4th at Suzuka but was given a 3-place grid penalty for causing the collision with Rosberg at Sepang but jumped up to 4th at the start and eventually finished there but dropped to 6th in the Drivers' Championship. 
At Kota, he qualified 6th, but with retirements for Raikkonen and Verstappen finished 4th and got fastest lap, and jumped back up to 4th in the Drivers' Championship. He qualified 7th in Mexico City, and crossed the line in 4th, but was promoted to 3rd as Verstappen received a time penalty for cutting corners while defending against Vettel, but Vettel then received a 10 second time penalty for moving under braking while defending against Ricardo and dropped to 5th, but was still voted driver of the day, despite going on an angry tirade over the radio when battling with Verstappen, in which he called Verstappen a little f***er, and told race director Charlie Whiting to f*** off. At Inter Lagos he qualified 5th, and in a wet race replete with safety cars and red flags, and very little green flag running, eventually finished 5th as well. He qualified 5th again at the season finale at Abu Dhabi, and after running a long second stint went on to super softs for the final one, and stormed his way past Raikkonen, Ricardo, and Verstappen, and closed up to Rosberg who was being deliberately backed into him by Hamilton in an attempt to clinch the championship, but couldn't, or perhaps didn't want to pass, and finished 3rd, got fastest lap and was voted driver of the day for the third time that year. He finished 4th in the championship with 212 points. 2016 was an erratic year for Vettel. At first it looked as if Ferrari had improved further and could properly challenge Mercedes, but after a few races this proved not to be the case, and even if it had, Vettel suffered serious setbacks in Bahrain and Sochi. Mercedes were as unstoppable as ever, and in the second half of the year Ferrari were overtaken by Red Bull. Vettel was being matched in many cases by Raikkonen and failed to get a single pole position or race win all year. Endless grid penalties meant he had numerous opportunities to show off his racecraft, but also had off races such as Sepang and bad luck with several first lap collisions that weren't his fault. Vettel began 2017 with the Race of Champions. He was knocked out in the group stages of the Race of Champions itself, and after teammate Pascal Wehrlein crashed and injured himself on the first day, single-handedly won the Nations Cup for Team Germany by defeating Kurt and Kyle Busch of Team USA NASCAR in the final. For 2017, the cars were widened, the front and rear wings were lowered and widened, and the tyres were enlarged and widened, all in a crude attempt to cling back down force and torque, but also made the cars much harder to follow one another. Ferrari's car, the SF70H, which Vettel christened Gina, showed promise in pre-season testing, and this continued at the season-opening Australian Grand Prix, where Vettel qualified second, three tenths behind Hamilton. He was running behind Hamilton in the first stint, but overcut him in the pit stop phase as Hamilton got stuck behind Verstappen for several laps and went on to win the race, taking his first victory in 18 months, his first first round victory in six years, and was voted driver of the day. He qualified second behind Hamilton in Shanghai, and then pitted in an early safety car and lost time after rejoining in sixth but climbed back up to second. He qualified third in Bahrain, behind Hamilton and his new teammate Valtteri Bottas, and passed Hamilton at the start and then inherited the lead from Bottas during a safety car and kept it to take his first win in Bahrain since 2013, and was voted driver of the day again. He took his first pole position of the year at Sochi, and first pole position since Singapore in 2015, but was passed by Bottas at the start, and stayed on his tail but was unable to get past and finish second. He qualified second at Barcelona, behind Hamilton, after initially being told to stop the car in Q1, but ignored this and carried on. He took the lead at the start, but after pitting was held up by Bottas for several laps until eventually pulling off a very impressive dummy move on him at Turn 1. When pitting again during a virtual safety car he exited alongside Hamilton and pushed him off track, but eventually lost the lead to him as he was on slower tyres and finished second, but was voted driver of the day for the third time in five races. In Monaco, it was Raikkonen that took pole with Vettel second and Hamilton way down in 13th. Vettel overcut him during the pit stop phase and won the Monaco Grand Prix for the second time in his career and gave Ferrari their first 1-2 in almost 7 years, and Hamilton was 7th, and he now had a 25 point lead over him and was voted driver of the day again. He qualified 2nd behind Hamilton at Montreal and dropped a 4th at the start after being hit by Verstappen who damaged his front wing. The wing then broke off during an early safety car which dropped him to last, but he eventually recovered to finish 4th and was voted driver of the day for the 3rd race in a row. He qualified 4th for the inaugural Azerbaijan Grand Prix and took 2nd on the first lap after Bottas and Raikkonen collided. Two safety cars came out early on in rapid succession, and during the second one, Vessel rear-ended Hamilton while keeping pace behind the slower than normal safety car, damaging his front wing and Hamilton's diffuser. Vettel perceived this as Hamilton brake testing him, and so he drove alongside and turned in on him and they banged wheels. 
After the race was red flagged and then restarted, Hamilton had to pit to fix his loose headrest which gave Vettel the lead, but at the same time Vettel was given a 10 second stop go penalty for the collision and rejoined in 7th but in front of Hamilton and eventually finished 4th with Hamilton 5th. In Austria, he qualified 2nd behind Bottas and finished 2nd behind Bottas with Hamilton in 4th. At Silverstone, he was used as a guinea pig once again as he had been the previous year to test out an experimental aero screen as a proposed form of cockpit protection alongside the halo. He aborted the test after only one lap however as it was distorting his vision and giving him motion sickness. He qualified 3rd, but he was passed by Verstappen at the start and then had a tyre blowout on the final lap which dropped him to 7th, while Hamilton won, who was now only one point behind him in the Drivers' Championship. Vettel took only his second pole position of the year in Hungary, and went on to take his 4th win of the year with Hamilton 4th, and went into the summer break leading the championship 14 points ahead of Hamilton. He qualified 2nd at Spa, behind Hamilton, and ran behind him until a mid-race safety car allowed him to attack at the restart, but lacked the straight line speed down the Kemmel straight and had to settle for 2nd. At Monza, he qualified 8th in the rain, 2.5 seconds down on Hamilton on pole, but an avalanche of penalties for other drivers meant he started 6th. He was up to 3rd by lap 8 and finished there, but had now lost the lead in the championship to Hamilton. In Singapore, Vettel took his third pole position of the year, with Hamilton down in fifth. At the start, he attempted to cut off Verstappen in second, but a fast starting Raikkonen came up on the left and sandwiched Verstappen in between them, which turned Raikkonen into Vettel's side pod. Raikkonen and Verstappen went off into the runoff, and Vettel then spun out at turn five with his left radiator destroyed, and gave Hamilton the lead, the win, a 28 point lead in the championship, and Ferrari their first ever double first lap retirement in their history. At the last ever running of the Malaysian Grand Prix, Vettel's engine died in FP3, and the team put in a new one which also didn't work, meaning he didn't set a qualifying time and started last. In the race, he was able to heroically climb up to fourth, with Hamilton finishing second, but after the race on the cooldown lap, he was rear-ended by Lance Stroll which tore the left rear wheel off, and he hitched a ride back to the pits of his Race of Champions teammate Pascal Wehrlein, and he was voted driver of the day. He qualified third at Suzuka, but started second behind Hamilton due to a grid penalty for Bottas. Mechanics were working on his car on the grid right up to the wire, and he had a very slow start and dropped down the field until retiring on lap 5 with a faulty spark plug, and with Hamilton winning he now had a 59 point lead in the championship. At Kota, he qualified second behind Hamilton, and took the lead at the start but was passed by Hamilton on lap 6 and finished second, and the gap increased to 66 points. Vettel took his 4th pole position of the year in Mexico City, with Hamilton 3rd, who could win the title if he finished 5th or higher. Verstappen, who had started 2nd, barged past Vettel at Turn 2, which allowed Hamilton to do the same. Vettel clipped both drivers' rear wheels at Turn 3, which damaged his front wing. Verstappen escaped unharmed, but Hamilton received a puncture. Both he and Vettel had to pit and drop to the back. Vettel had lost far less time than Hamilton and worked his way through the field much faster. He eventually finished 4th and took fastest lap, and was voted driver of the day for the 7th time that year. Hamilton didn't get past anyone until lap 27 and eventually finished 9th, which was enough for him to seal the championship. Vettel qualified 2nd at Interlagos, behind Bottas, but passed him at the start and went on to take his 5th win of the year, and at the season finale at Abu Dhabi, he qualified 3rd and finished 3rd. He ended the season runner-up in the Drivers' Championship for the first time since 2009, with 317 points, 46 behind Hamilton. 2017 gave Vettel his first proper chance to fight for the championship since 2013. He put on a number of very strong drives, and was voted Driver of the Day more times than anyone else. But the sad truth is that he was fighting a losing battle. The Ferrari was noticeably inferior to the Mercedes in qualifying trim, and Vettel got just 4 pole positions in the year to Hamilton's 11, but in race place it was closer, but not close enough. Vettel started strongly, but the cracks started showing in Baku, where he needlessly threw away what inadvertently could have been an easy win, and then had a third tyre blowout in 3 years at Silverstone. But the death knell first rang in Singapore. This error of judgement alone did not cost him the championship, but he was given little to no chance to fight back, with mechanical problems wrecking the next two races. Still, it was clear Ferrari were on the right track with the new regulations, and he would have another chance to fight again in 2018. 2018 saw the controversial introduction of the Halo device, which was attached to Ferrari's car, the SF71H, which Vettel christened Loria. 
2018 started in a similar fashion to 2017, with Vettel qualifying third behind Raikkonen and Hamilton in Melbourne. Vettel ran behind them in the first stint and took the lead after running longer. He was then able to pit during a well-timed virtual safety car and stayed in the lead and went on to win the race. He took pole in Bahrain, which was also his 200th Grand Prix, and Hamilton started 9th after changing the gearbox. Vettel was controlling the lead, but after Raikkonen ran over one of the pit crew and broke his leg, Vettel was unable to pit again and had to run an extremely long second stint. He was being chased down by Bottas at the end, but just about held on to take his first successive race wins in four and a half years. He took his second pole in a row at Shanghai, and with Raikkonen in second, Ferrari got their first consecutive front row lockout since 2006. Vettel was undercut by Bottas during the first pit stops, and during a mid-race safety car, Verstappen and Ricardo both pitted, and after the race resumed, Ricardo took second from Vettel, and Verstappen then tried to pass him at turn 14, but instead hit him and put both of them into a spin which allowed Hamilton past. Vettel had burned his tyres and received floor damage and dropped to 8th, while Hamilton finished 4th after a time penalty dropped Verstappen to 5th. Vettel took his third consecutive pole in Baku, something he had not achieved since the Korean Grand Prix in 2013. He ceded the lead to Bottas after pitting on lap 31, but after Ricardo and Verstappen took each other out on lap 40, the safety car was brought out and Bottas was given a free pit stop and kept the lead. Vettel made an ambitious attempt to regain the lead at the restart, but locked his tyres and dropped to fourth. Bottas then got a puncture on the following lap, but Sergio Perez passed Vettel on his flat-spotted tyres at the same time and he finished fourth, with Hamilton winning, and lost his lead in the Drivers' Championship. He qualified third in Barcelona, behind Hamilton and Bottas. He passed Bottas at the start, and pitted during a virtual safety car on lap 40 and dropped to fourth, but ended up staying there. At Monaco, he qualified second, behind Ricardo, and despite Ricardo losing power during the race, was unable to pass him and finished second with Hamilton third. Vessel took pole at Montreal, and comfortably led the race to take the 50th win of his career and was voted driver of the day, and Hamilton was fifth, which meant Vessel took back the lead in the Drivers' Championship. At the first running of the French Grand Prix since 2008, held at Paul Ricard for the first time since 1990, Vettel qualified third, behind both Mercedes again, and rear-ended Bottas at the start which gave Bottas a puncture and broke off Vettel's front wing, and they both dropped to last. Vettel received a 5 second time penalty and eventually finished fifth, while Hamilton won and increased his lead to 14 points, but Vettel was still voted driver of the day. He qualified third again in Austria, but was demoted to sixth for blocking Carlos Sainz in qualifying. He lost time to his rivals by dropping to eighth at the start, and got up to third after Bottas broke down and then passing Ricardo and Hamilton, both of whom also broke down, meaning he regained the lead in the championship by one point. Vettel qualified second at Silverstone, behind Hamilton, however he took the lead at the start and Raikkonen then spun Hamilton around at Arena who dropped to last. Vettel pitted during a late safety car and lost the lead to Bottas, but on his fresher tyres pulled off a very impressive move at Brooklands to take the lead and his first British Grand Prix victory since 2009, while Hamilton recovered to second. At Hockenheim, Vettel got his first home pole position since 2010, while Hamilton broke down in Q1 and started 14th. He led at the start and ended up behind Raikkonen after the first round of pit stops, with Raikkonen having pitted much earlier. Vettel immediately started imploring the pit wall to order Raikkonen to let him pass as he was losing time and his much fresher tyres were overheating in the turbulent air, and it took 13 laps before they did so. A few laps later, rain started coming down, and Vettel hit a curb and damaged his front wing, and a few laps later locked his rear wheels at the Saxe curve and went across the gravel trap into the barriers, angrily banging his hands on the steering wheel. Hamilton had climbed through the field and took the lead during the safety car this triggered and won and took a 17-point lead in the Drivers' Championship. In a wet qualifying in Hungary, Vettel only qualified fourth, but eventually was only able to finish second while Hamilton won again, and went into the summer break second in the Drivers' Championship, 24 points behind. He qualified second in another wet qualifying at Spa, a whole seventh tenths behind Hamilton. Nico Hülkenberg, Fernando Alonso and Charles Leclerc all crashed out at La Source, but here came Sebastian Vettel down the Kemmel Strait and took the lead just before the safety car was brought out. Hamilton was caught out at the restart, and Vettel remained unchallenged and took the 52nd win of his career, overtaking Alain Prost to go third in all-time career wins and was voted driver of the day. Vettel went fastest in Q1 and Q2 at Monza, but inadvertently gave pole to Raikkonen in Q3 who got a tow running behind him. 
He got boxed in by Raikkonen at Variante del Retifilo, so Hamilton then passed him at Variante della Roggia, where Vettel hit Hamilton's side pod and was put into a spin and dropped to last. No penalty was issued, and he eventually recovered to fourth while Hamilton won, increasing his lead to 30 points. Before the Singapore Grand Prix, it was announced Raikkonen would be leaving Ferrari at the end of the year and Vettel would be joined in 2019 by Sauber driver Charles Leclerc. Vettel was only able to qualify third, behind Verstappen and a whole six tenths behind Hamilton on pole. He passed Verstappen at the start but was repassed by him later in the race and finished in third, some 40 seconds behind Hamilton, whose lead went up to 40 points. He qualified third again, behind Hamilton and Bottas at Sochi. He unsuccessfully tried to pass Hamilton at the start and finished third after Hamilton controversially won after being gifted the win when Bottas was ordered to let him through, and increased his lead to 50 points. At Suzuka, Vettel qualified only ninth after the pit wall decided to send him and Raikkonen out on intermediates in very light rain, and was some four and a half seconds slower than Hamilton on pole, but started eighth. He had a strong start and got himself up to fourth, but after the restart following an early safety car, tried to pass Verstappen at the spoon curve but hit his side pod and spun again. He recovered to sixth while Hamilton won again, increasing his lead to 67 points. At the United States Grand Prix, Ferrari removed a series of upgrades that had been hindering their performance for several races, and Vettel qualified second, just six hundredths behind Hamilton, but was demoted to fifth for failing to adequately slow for red flags in FP1. He tried to pass Ricardo at turn 13 on the first lap, but hit his side pod and spun for the third time, dropping to last. He again recovered and finished fourth, while Hamilton was third and Raikkonen won his first race in over five years. Vettel qualified fourth in Mexico City, behind Hamilton, but midway through the race passed him and finished second, while Hamilton was over a minute behind in fourth, but in a repeat of 2017 had clinched the title once again. He qualified second in Interlagos, behind Hamilton, but had poor pace and finished in sixth, and at the season finale at Abu Dhabi, qualified third but passed Bottas in the race and finished second. He ended the season runner-up in the Drivers' Championship once again, 88 points behind Hamilton. 2018 was a disaster in almost every possible way. The car was an improvement in every aspect, being much closer in qualifying pace to Mercedes than 2017, often faster in the races, and didn't have any significant reliability problems. This time, however, Vettel himself made a succession of costly errors, which only got bigger and bigger as the season went on. In the first half of the season, he was largely in command despite a few errors and bad luck, but Hockenheim was a game-changer, and from then on, he just fell further and further behind a near-faultless Hamilton in his desperation to keep up due to his driver errors, which were compounded by Ferrari's poor strategy decisions and an upgrade package that made the car worse, particularly in the wet. There was a clear design flaw in the car as well, as three times he t-boned another car, but each time he was the one that spun rather than the car he hit. His deteriorating performances were also exemplified by the fact that he had been voted driver of the day just three times. Vettel began 2019 by returning to the race of champions, and paired up with Michael Schumacher's son Mick, who had recently been crowned European Formula 3 champion. Vettel was knocked out of the group stages of the race of champions itself, and he and Mick were defeated in the final of the Nations Cup by Johan Christoffersen and Tom Christensen of Team Nordic, but Vettel did win the ROC Skills Challenge. Ferrari had a new look in 2019, as Vettel was joined by Charles Leclerc, and Maurizio Arrivabene, who had been team principal ever since Vettel joined Ferrari, was replaced in his position by Mattia Bonotto. The SF90, which Vettel christened Lina, had been designed with a high-rake, heavy front-end philosophy in mind, which went contrary to Vettel's driving style. In testing, however, both drivers said they felt very confident in the car, and they were regularly topping the timesheets once again, which gave hope that they may have finally cracked the code to beating Mercedes. These hopes were quickly dashed, however, at the season-opening Australian Grand Prix as Vettel qualified third, a whole seven-tenths behind Hamilton on pole. He was passed by Verstappen halfway through the race and finished in fourth, almost a minute behind winner Bottas. In Bahrain, it was Leclerc who took pole with Vettel three-tenths slower in second. Vettel took the lead after Leclerc had a poor start, but Leclerc repassed him on lap 6. He fell behind Leclerc, and he was passed by Hamilton at turn 4 on lap 38 and spun exiting the corner, despite there being no contact. He flat-spotted his tyres and vibrations caused his front wing to break off between turns 10 and 11, and he pitted and dropped to 9th and eventually finished 5th, while Leclerc lost a cylinder in the engine and dropped to 3rd, and overtook him in the Drivers' Championship. 
At the Chinese Grand Prix, Formula 1's 1000th Grand Prix, Vettel qualified third behind both Mercedes and was passed by Leclerc at the start but repassed him on lap 11 and took his first podium of the year and moved back up to fourth in the Drivers' Championship. In Baku, he qualified third and finished third once again and moved up to third in the Drivers' Championship and at Barcelona he qualified third but was passed by Verstappen at the start and finished fourth despite early on being ordered to let Leclerc pass and dropped back to fourth in the Drivers' Championship. In Monaco, he qualified fourth but passed Bottas during an early safety car triggered by Leclerc when Bottas took an extra pit stop and finished third but was classified second following a time penalty for Verstappen. He took a surprise pole position in Montreal by two tenths from Hamilton. Vettel held the lead throughout the race, but had Hamilton on his tail the entire time. On lap 48, Vettel missed his braking at turn 4 and went across the grass. He rejoined at the exit of turn 5 just in front of Hamilton and both of them narrowly missed the wall. He kept the lead but was awarded a 5 second time penalty for unsafely re-entering the track and forcing another driver off track. He was unable to break ahead of Hamilton and crossed the line in first but classified in second. After returning to the pit lane, instead of driving into Parc Fermé, he parked up at the pit lane entrance and after being collected by an F1 official, stormed through the Mercedes garage to Parc Fermé and moved the first place board in front of Hamilton's car to the empty spot where his car should have been. Ferrari unsuccessfully appealed the penalty and the result stood, leaving Mercedes still undefeated in 2019 but Vettel was voted driver of the day. In France, Vettel was only able to qualify 7th and passed both McLarens early on and finished 5th with fastest lap. He didn't set a time in Q3 in Austria and started 9th, while Leclerc was on pole and was up to 4th by lap 6, but had a slow pit stop and lost time and finished 4th after passing Hamilton on the penultimate lap and dropped to 4th in the Drivers' Championship. At the British Grand Prix, Vettel was chosen to give a very moving tribute to former race director Charlie Whiting, who had died suddenly on the eve of the Australian Grand Prix, in which he said, In motorsport, we depend on the stopwatch. We depend on time. We chase time. We become experts in chasing time. Sometimes it appears that we catch it. We're able to hold on to it for a moment before the moment is gone again. We go in circles, chasing time. We forget the world around us. It feels like flying. For us, it is the greatest feeling we can experience, but it comes at a cost. The risk we take is one worth taking to get that feeling again and again. F1 is the pinnacle of motorsport. With no other cars, one can go faster, chasing after time. But it is also the pinnacle because of you. You've made that chase safer for our generations. In fact, we believe climbing into our cars today is safer than into any other car. We call them our cars, but a lot of them belong to you. You have not been our guardian angel, as angels show up occasionally. No, you have been our guard. Working every day, standing guard every time we are on track. You are a great part of our lives today, more than we know, more than we can express, and more than we can imagine. Your efforts, your ideas, your love for racing, your love for the sport have helped and will continue to help save lives. Your impact has been so profound that saying thank you just doesn't seem to be enough. The marks you've left on track are beyond those of a perfect lap. Your style was so balanced, it seemed like you'd found the perfect setup. In the name of all the current Formula 1 drivers, and for the drivers that worked with you, we finally want to say, you were a true racer, you were our race director, you were our guard, you were our friend, and you shall stay around because one is alive until the last one forgets about you. We will remember you. Take care, Charlie. For the race, he qualified 6th and passed Pierre Gasly for 5th at the start and got up to 3rd after a mid-race safety car gave him a free pit stop. Later in the race, Verstappen passed Vettel for 3rd down the hangar straight and in an attempt to repass him at club he misjudged his braking and rear-ended Verstappen and put both of them in the gravel trap. They were both able to carry on, but Vettel had a damaged front wing and pitted and emerged in 17th and last, and climbed up to 15th at the end but was demoted to 16th following a 10 second time penalty. He was unable to set a qualifying time in Hockenheim due to an ECU failure, so started the race in last. The race was run in heavy rain, 
and he worked his way through the field, and eventually finished in a sensational second, coming within 8 seconds of winning the race from last place, and was also the only driver in the entire race to neither spin nor go off track at any point, showing his wet weather skills had clearly not deteriorated. He qualified 5th in Hungary, and inherited 4th from Bottas on lap 2 after his front wing broke, and ran close with Leclerc and passed him for 3rd with 3 laps remaining, but was over a minute behind winner Hamilton, and he ended the summer break 4th in the Drivers' Championship with 156 points. At Spa, Vettel qualified a surprise 2nd, but what was more surprising was the 7 tenths gap to Leclerc on pole. Hamilton passed him at the start, but here came Vettel again down the Kemmel straight to take 2nd back. He and Leclerc broke away from the field, and Vettel ran a two-stop strategy while Leclerc did a one-stop and was forced to cede to him after he'd pitted. His extra pit stop meant he finished fourth with fastest lap, while Leclerc took his maiden win and Ferrari's first of the year. He qualified fourth at Monza after getting caught in a group of drivers trying to get optimal track position to get a tow for their final runs in Q3, while Leclerc was on pole again. On lap 6, Vettel spun on his own at the Ascari chicane and very clumsily rejoined the track in front of Lance Stroll who was forced onto the grass and dropped out of the points. Vettel resumed in last place and eventually finished in 13th while Leclerc won again, who also overtook him in the Drivers' Championship. In Singapore, Vettel qualified 3rd with Leclerc on pole once again. He managed to undercut Leclerc and Hamilton during the pit stops and went on to take his first win of the year, his fifth win at Marina Bay and was voted Driver of the Day. Vettel qualified third again in Sochi, with Leclerc on his fourth consecutive pole position. He got a good toe at the start and took the lead at turn two. Within a few laps, the pit wall were ordering him to swap places with Leclerc, which he ignored as he was pulling away from Leclerc who himself was in the clutches of Hamilton in third. Leclerc was deliberately pitted early in order to compensate for this and undercut Vettel. Vettel pitted and emerged behind Leclerc, but then suffered an MG UK failure on his outlap, and tried to return to the pits but ended up pulling over which triggered a virtual safety car which gave Hamilton and Bottas a free pit stop and the lead and the win for Hamilton, but Vettel was still awarded driver of the day for the second race in a row. Due to disruption from Typhoon Hagibis, qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix was postponed to Sunday morning, and Vettel took his first pole position since Canada. He released the clutch early however, but without it being registered as a jump start and was passed by Bottas, and eventually finished in second behind him. In Mexico City, he qualified third behind Leclerc and Verstappen, but started second as Verstappen was penalised for ignoring yellow flags. Vettel was passed by Hamilton and Leclerc had a slow stop which meant Vettel finished second behind Hamilton, with Leclerc fourth, and he moved up to fourth in the Drivers' Championship. The fact that Ferrari had gone from having the second and at times third fastest car before the summer break to one that had unmatched power and straight line speed after it, leading to them taking six consecutive pole positions, had not gone unnoticed by their rivals, particularly as team factories are expected to shut down during the summer recess. Red Bull went to the FIA for clarification regarding the legality of bypassing the mandatory fuel flow sensor, which they correctly hypothesised was what Ferrari were doing. The FIA confirmed this was in fact illegal, and at Cota, Vettel qualified second and Leclerc fourth. Vettel had problems right from the start with severe understeer and dropped to seventh on lap two. He hit a curb at turn nine on lap eight which then caused his suspension to collapse, and despite the circuit's long straights, Leclerc only managed to finish fourth because as Verstappen rather bluntly put it, they weren't cheating anymore, and Vettel dropped back to fifth in the drivers' championship. Vettel qualified second, behind Verstappen at Interlagos, while Leclerc started 14th due to an engine change. Vettel was passed by Hamilton at the start, and after a late race safety car was passed by Alexander Albon at the restart. A few laps later, Leclerc, who had worked his way through the field, passed Vettel at the Senna S, but Vettel repassed him on the run to the Shida de Largo and turned in on Leclerc and gave himself a puncture and broke Leclerc's front suspension, in a near identical copy of his collision with Mark Webber at Istanbul nine and a half years earlier, which led to Vettel's famous exclamation of Mein God muss das sein over the radio, which roughly translates as My God, does it have to be that way? And both drivers pulled over, triggering a second safety car. At the season finale at Abu Dhabi, Vettel qualified fifth, but started 4th following a penalty for Bottas, but was eventually passed by Bottas and finished 5th. He ended the season 5th in the Drivers' Championship with 240 points, 24 behind Leclerc. 2019 had been a turbulent year for Vettel, 
Ferrari's design philosophy had clearly not worked, as the car was now less competitive and also harder to control as Vettel's spins continued, but this time without contact with other drivers, and the only way they could make it competitive was by breaking the rules. Vettel's mental strength had clearly been affected by twice losing the title to Hamilton in a similar fashion, and it was not helped by the car being worse and his new teammate being far less submissive than Raikkonen was. At first, Vettel had the edge, as the less experienced Leclerc made several errors early on, but things swung massively in Leclerc's favour after the summer break, and the team's allegiance started switching towards him too. As with 2018, Vettel had once again made a succession of costly errors, with the biggest being in Italy and Brazil, but did also show flashes of brilliance such as his supreme drives in Hockenheim and Singapore. Virtually no rule changes were brought in 2020, so Ferrari's car, the SF1000, which Vettel christened Lucilla, was merely an evolution of the SF90. In pre-season testing, the car's pace did not impress, but everyone was distracted by the news of a novel coronavirus that had been slowly spreading across the world out of China for the past couple of months, with Ferrari expressing concern as it had hit their home nation of Italy particularly hard. Everybody travelled to the season-opening Australian Grand Prix, despite the fact that the virus was already in Melbourne, and after McLaren withdrew following a team member testing positive, Vettel decided to leave on the Thursday and return home, and eventually other drivers followed suit and the race was cancelled, and the entire calendar was suspended as nations across the world went into lockdown to attempt to control the spread of the virus. During this break, it was announced that Vettel's Ferrari contract would not be renewed for 2021, with Vettel saying there was, quote, no common desire to stay together, end quote, beyond the end of the season, and he would be replaced by McLaren driver Carlos Sainz. Eventually, a new 17 race calendar was devised, which began in July with a double header in Austria. Vettel was shockingly knocked out in Q2 and qualified 11th, while Leclerc was 7th. In the race, Vettel made little progress and after a mid-race safety car attempted a pass on Carlos Sainz at Ramos, but they touched and he spun and dropped to 15th, and eventually finished 10th out of 11 finishers while Leclerc was second. For the second race in Austria, Ferrari brought a host of upgrades, and in a wet qualifying it was Vettel who made Q3 and qualified 10th, knocking Leclerc out in Q2 who then started 14th after blocking Daniel Kvyat. The race was dry, and Vettel lost two places at the start, and Leclerc then dive-bombed him at Ramus and took both of them out of the race, preventing the team testing the new upgrades in race conditions. The upgrades appeared to have worked in Hungary, as Vettel qualified 5th with Leclerc 6th, and he eventually finished 6th, having been lapped by winner Hamilton. At the British Grand Prix, Vettel qualified 10th while Leclerc was 4th, and he eventually finished in 10th as well. A second race was held at Silverstone called the 70th Anniversary Grand Prix. This time, Vettel qualified 12th but started 11th, and then spun at Abbey at the start and dropped to last and eventually finished 13th. He qualified 11th in Barcelona but ran a one-stop strategy and managed to finish 7th and was voted driver of the day. He qualified only 13th at Spa with Leclerc 12th, and eventually finished there as well, which made it the first race in which he had crossed the chequered flag outside of the points without any mechanical problems, slow pit stops, collisions with other drivers or unenforced errors since the Chinese Grand Prix in 2008. He was knocked out in Q1 at Monza and qualified 17th, his worst qualifying performance since his Toro Rosso days, and the rear brakes disintegrated on lap 7 and he went through the bollards at Variante del Retafilo. For the first ever running of the Tuscan Grand Prix, held at Mugello, Ferrari ran a special one-off vintage maroon livery as it was their 1000th Grand Prix. Here, it was also announced that from 2021 Vettel would be replacing Sergio Perez at the then Racing Point, who from the following year would be known as Aston Martin. Vettel qualified 14th while Leclerc was 5th. He was hit by a spinning Carlos Sainz at the start which broke his front wing and dropped him to last. The race was red flagged twice and he eventually finished 10th. He qualified 15th and started 14th in Sochi and finished in 13th. For the inaugural Eiffel Grand Prix, held at the Nürburgring, Vettel qualified 11th, with Leclerc 4th, and he spun attempting to pass Antonio Giovinazzi on lap 11 and eventually finished in 11th. The first Portuguese Grand Prix since 1996 was held at Portimao for the first time, and Vettel qualified 15th with Leclerc 4th, but managed to finish 10th. He qualified 14th at the inaugural Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix, held at Imola, and finished in 12th. 
At the first Turkish Grand Prix since 2011, which Vettel had won, he qualified 12th in the rain on brand new ultra low grip tarmac, but started 11th with Leclerc behind him in 12th. He had one of the best opening laps of his entire career and got himself up to third place. He was running in fourth in the second half of the race, with Leclerc in front, who tried to pass Sergio Perez for second at the final corner but ran wide and gave Vettel his first podium of 2020, once again as with the 2019 German Grand Prix being the only driver to neither spin nor go off track at any point in the race, and he was rightfully voted driver of the day. In Bahrain, he qualified 11th, ahead of Leclerc in 12th, and finished 13th while Leclerc was 10th. In a second race in Bahrain, running the outer layout, he qualified 13th while Leclerc qualified 4th, but Leclerc took himself and Verstappen out at the start and Vettel finished 12th, and at the season finale at Abu Dhabi, he qualified 13th with Leclerc ahead in 12th and finished behind him in 14th. He ended the season 13th in the Drivers' Championship with 33 points. 2020 was a bit of a throwaway year. Vettel was driving the least competitive car he'd had since his first year of Toro Rosso, and its pace was also incredibly inconsistent, with Leclerc and Vettel often being at opposite ends of the grid. It was clear that Leclerc was extracting more from it than Vettel, but also understandable as he was now de facto team leader and Vettel knew he was leaving after having essentially fallen out with the team. Vettel once again made more spins, but Leclerc himself had lots of accidents. Most races for Vettel were fairly unremarkable, but the one highlight to take away was Turkey, which remains one of the greatest drives of his career. Vettel had a new look in 2021, driving for his fifth team in Formula 1. The planned rule changes for 2021 had to be deferred to 2022 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and so all teams ran their previous year's car with small changes to the width of the rear floor to reduce downforce, and so Aston Martin's car, the AMR21, which Vettel christened Honey Rider, in homage to the famous Bond girl, was largely the same as the previous year's racing point, which itself has caused controversy as it was near identical to the 2019 Mercedes, and was comfortably the fastest midfield car all year. This competitiveness did not continue, however, as at the season-opening Bahrain Grand Prix, Vettel was knocked out in Q1 after his second run was ruined by rookie Nikita Mazepin spinning at Turn 1, and he then received a 5-place grip penalty for failing to adequately slow for yellow flags when he did, and so he started last, while new teammate Lance Stroll made it into Q3 and qualified 10th. He got up to 14th at the start, and later in the race rear-ended Esteban Ocon and dropped to 17th, and eventually finished 15th out of 16 finishers. He made Q2 at Imola and qualified 13th with Stroll 10th again. He ended up starting from the pit lane as the brakes overheated on the grid, and then also received a 10 second time penalty as the mechanics failed to fit the tyres before the 5 minute deadline. Despite it being a wet race, he didn't make much progress and was running in 14th when the gearbox died with 2 laps to go. At Portimao, he made Q3 and qualified 10th, but eventually finished in 12th after passing Stroll on the final lap. He qualified 13th in Barcelona and finished 13th, and at Monaco he made it into Q3 and qualified as season's best 8th. He jumped Pierre Gasly and Lewis Hamilton in the pit stops and eventually finished 5th, and was voted driver of the day, even though the TV director was more interested in showing his teammate hitting a curb than this. He qualified 11th in Baku and ran a long first stint and led the race for a few laps, and gained places from this and yet more at the restarts of two successive safety cars and eventually finished in second, and was voted driver of the day once again. In France, he qualified 12th and eventually finished 9th. In the first of two races in Austria, he qualified 14th and finished 12th, and in the second one he qualified 8th but was demoted to 11th for impeding Fernando Alonso in qualifying, and he was running in 13th when he was wiped out by old teammate Kimi Raikkonen on the final lap. The British Grand Prix saw the first ever sprint race in Formula 1. He qualified 10th for it, and finished the sprint race in 8th, where he would line up on Sunday. He got up to 6th at the start, but spun at Luffield on lap 4 and dropped to last and retired with an overheating engine on lap 41. He qualified 10th in Hungary, but was one of the beneficiaries of Bottas's trip to the bowling alley and got himself up to 2nd, behind Esteban Ocon. He remained on his tail for the entire race but couldn't get past and took his second podium of the year, but after the race the stewards failed to extract a 1 litre fuel sample from the car, which led to him being disqualified for the first time in his career. He qualified a season's best fifth in torrential rain at Spa, despite chastising race control for initially allowing Q3 to go ahead which led to a big crash for Lando Norris at Radion, but the race itself lasted for precisely two laps and he was classified in fifth. 
At the first running of the Dutch Grand Prix since 1985, he only qualified 17th but started 15th and finished 13th. Another sprint race was held at Monza. Vettel qualified 11th for it and finished in 12th, and then finished the main race in 12th as well. He qualified 11th in Sochi and started 10th and finished 12th, and qualified 11th and started 10th once again at Istanbul, but dropped down after making an ill-judged switch to dry tyres and finished 18th. At Kota, he qualified 12th but started 18th due to using a new power unit but managed to climb through to 10th. He qualified 11th in Mexico City but started 9th and managed to finish 7th. For the third and final sprint race of the year at Interlagos, he qualified 11th and finished it 10th, but finished the main race in 11th. He qualified and finished 10th for the inaugural Qatar Grand Prix, despite dropping to 17th at the start. And at the inaugural Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, he was knocked out in Q1 and qualified 17th. He got up to the points early on but was hit by Yuki Tsunoda and then Kimi Raikkonen and retired with 6 laps to go. At the season finale in Abu Dhabi, he qualified 15th and was one of the five laps drivers that was allowed to unlap themselves at the end and finished 11th. He ended the season 12th in the Drivers' Championship with 43 points. 2021 was the first time in a very long time that Vettel had a genuinely uncompetitive car. He spent large parts of the year stuck in the midfield, but still had his moments with strong drives in Monaco, Baku and Hungary, and without his disqualification at the latter, would have scored nearly double the points of teammate Stroll. Vettel began 2022 by returning to the race of champions, teaming up with Mick Schumacher for a second time. He was defeated in the final of the race of champions itself by Sebastian Loeb, and he and Schumacher were knocked out in the quarter-finals of the Nations Cup by Jimmy Johnson and Colton Herter of Team USA. 2022 heralded a new era in Formula 1 with the return of ground effects for the first time in 40 years. This, combined with much simplified aerodynamics, meant the cars looked and drove far different to 2021. In pre-season testing, it didn't look as if the AMR22 would be any faster than its predecessor, and for the first time since 2007, Vettel chose not to name it, as he felt it wasn't fast enough to warrant it. Vettel completed pre-season testing, but shortly afterward tested positive for COVID-19 and was forced to miss the opening rounds in Bahrain and Jeddah, and his seat was taken by Nico Hülkenberg. He made his return for the Australian Grand Prix, but endured one of the worst race weekends in his career. The car broke down only a few laps into FP1 and he rode back to the pits on a scooter and missed FP2 completely. He then crashed in FP3 and was eliminated in Q1 in qualifying and lined up 17th. He slowly made progress and was up to 12th when he crashed out at turn 5 on lap 23. Imola saw another sprint race. Vettel qualified 9th for it but finished in 13th but made up for this in the race proper and finished 8th, scoring Aston Martin's first points of the year. At the inaugural Miami Grand Prix, he qualified 13th and started from the pit lane along with Stroll due to low fuel temperatures. He made good progress in the race and got up to 9th, until being clumsily hit by Mick Schumacher at Turn 1 on lap 54 and taken out of the race. He was knocked out in Q1 at Barcelona and started 16th, and eventually climbed through to 11th. In Monaco, he qualified 9th and finished 10th. He qualified 9th again in Baku and finished 6th. In Canada, he qualified 17th and started 16th and finished 12th. He qualified 18th in the rain at Silverstone and hit Alexander Albon at the start, but eventually stormed through to finish 8th. For the sprint race in Austria, he qualified 20th and last, and was hit by Alexander Albon and put in the gravel and eventually retired from the sprint race and was classified 19th and started the race proper 18th. Mid-race, he was hit by Gasly and put into the gravel again and finished 16th, but in the media pen after the race was informed that he had received a 5 second time penalty for exceeding track limits and dropped to 17th and last. In France, he qualified 14th and started 12th, and eventually finished 11th, just behind Stroll who he rear-ended at the final turn. On the Wednesday before the Hungarian Grand Prix, Vettel, who had always eschewed social media and remained the last remaining Formula 1 driver in the social media age to not have any official social media accounts, blindsided everyone by launching an Instagram account, and by the following morning already had more than a quarter of a million followers. He then posted two videos, one in English and one in German, in which he announced his retirement from Formula 1 at the end of 2022. This naturally dominated all media duties that weekend, and he crashed at Turn 10 in FP3 and qualified a disappointing 18th, but came through in the race to finish 10th. He qualified 16th at Spa, but due to a slew of grid penalties started 10th. 
He had a fantastic start and got up to 5th and eventually finished in 8th. He qualified 19th at Zandvoort and finished 13th, and at Monza he qualified 17th but due to another slew of grid penalties started 11th, but suffered an engine failure on lap 11. In Singapore, he qualified 14th and started 13th, but got up to 8th on the first lap and finished 8th after being passed by Max Verstappen on the final lap. He qualified 9th at Suzuka, and in a wet race with very little green flag running, got himself up to 6th, and was caught by Fernando Alonso at the Casio Triangle on the final lap and beat him to the chequered flag by just 11 thousandths of a second and was voted driver of the day, but did lose his 9-year-old record for most wins in the season to Max Verstappen. He qualified 12th at Cota but started 10th, and had another strong start and got up to 5th on the first lap, and briefly led the race but had a slow stop which dropped into 13th, but he passed Kevin Magnussen on the final lap to finish 8th and was voted driver of the day again. He set an identical lap time to Mick Schumacher in Q1 in Mexico City and started 16th and finished 14th. At the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, he qualified 13th for the final sprint race of the year and finished it in 9th after being pushed onto the grass by Stroll and passing him. He was running as high as 5th in the race proper, but after a late safety car dropped to 11th. For now, Vettel's Formula 1 career and racing career at large will be coming to an end following the conclusion of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix this weekend. For many F1 fans, including myself, he has been a constant on the F1 grid for the past 15 years. He will be ending his career with either 298 or 299 race starts, ranking 7th overall, 53 or 54 wins, ranking 3rd overall, 4 drivers' championships, joint 4th overall of Alain Prost, 122 or 123 podiums, ranking 3rd overall, 57 or 58 pole positions, ranking 4th overall, 38 or 39 fastest laps, ranking 5th overall, anywhere from 3,097 to 3,123 career points, ranking 2nd overall, and anywhere from 3,323 to 3,349 career points and converted to the modern points system, ranking 3rd overall. In his early years, he broke numerous youth records, most of which have since been beaten by Max Verstappen, but he remains the youngest pole sitter, the youngest driver to get pole and the win at the same race, the youngest driver to get a hat-trick, the youngest championship runner-up, and most importantly, the youngest single, double, triple and quadruple world champion. It was Vettel's supreme driving skill that allowed him to start as early as he did and break these records. He is an exceptional qualifier, as attested to by his record for most pole positions in a season with 15 in 2011. His pole position in Singapore in 2013 has gone down in folklore, as he felt confident enough to do only a single run in Q3 and still got pole, and of course commanded the race. As well as his performances over one lap, his performances over an entire race distance were what made him so hard to beat. He was always great at getting a good launch and then nailing the opening laps in order to get himself out of DRS range to then disappear into the distance, and would often risk pushing for fastest lap on the final lap, even before points were awarded for doing so. This enabled him to break another record for most consecutive wins with 9, set in 2013, something Hamilton and Schumacher have never come close to. Another record he has which may never be beaten is as the only driver to get more than 50 podium finishes with two different teams. His tendency to control races from the front, mostly during his Red Bull years, led to accusations of lack of racecraft when he started further back, as despite winning 53 races, he has never won from lower than third on the grid, whereas the three drivers he's most often compared to, Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, have all won races from outside the top 10. However, Vettel holds a lower percentage of wins from pole and second place than Hamilton does, with 47 of his 53 wins coming from the front row compared to 93 of Hamilton's 103 wins, and he has almost double the percentage of wins from third place than Hamilton does, with 6 to Hamilton's 7. However, Vettel has still finished on the podium from outside the top 10 on three occasions, all three of which rank among his best ever performances. He does however have his flaws. Several times he has been involved in collisions with other drivers, which he more often than not was predominantly at fault for. The two most notorious are of course with Mark Webber at Istanbul in 2010 and with Kimi Räikkönen and Max Verstappen at Singapore in 2017. As well as this, he has also gained a reputation in the hybrid era as a spinner, doing so on numerous occasions, where few other contemporary drivers have. 
This first began towards the tail end of his rivalry with Lewis Hamilton, and it points to both cracks in his mental strength and confidence, and flaws in the drivability of his cars, as it is no secret that the Adrian Newey designed Red Bulls, with their innovative diffuser designs that planted the rear wheels on track and were perfectly tailored to him, suited his driving style to a T, in the same way that the modern high-rake heavy front-end Red Bulls are tailored to Max Verstappen, and the hybrids with their relative lack of torque and increased power but more unpredictable power bands don't fit so well for him. Despite this, Vettel has always had a very good understanding of tyre management, able to run very long stints, sometimes longer than the tyres want him to, and is also a fantastic wet weather driver, having driven in more than 20 races that involve the use of wet weather tyres, winning two of them and getting podiums in five others. In the same way that Hamilton excels at Silverstone and Barcelona, Verstappen excels at the Red Bull Ring, and Bottas excels at Sochi, Vettel's stomping grounds are Marina Bay and Suzuka, having won the former five times and the latter four times. He has always said Suzuka is his favourite circuit, he won his second title there, and he got visibly emotional talking about it at his final appearance there this year, where he put on another stonker of a performance. Another testament to his skill and popularity is the fact that since its inception in 2016, Vettel has been voted driver of the day on 22 occasions, second only to Verstappen with 36, and comfortably ahead of Hamilton with 12. The two races that sum him up best, I feel, are Singapore 2013, leaving everyone in his dust with minimal efforts with no way for them to answer it, and Brazil 2012, having everything but the kitchen sink thrown at him, but not giving up and putting in the graft and being rewarded as champion. Now, we've talked extensively about Vettel the driver, but what about Vettel the man? Vettel has always been secretive about his private life, and until only a couple of years ago little was known of his activities and life off track. This puts him at a contrast to most other drivers of his generation who are highly active on social media, and particularly ones such as Hamilton who has always been tabloid fodder and is a regular guest at red carpet events, mingles with members of high society and is actively involved in numerous causes and passion projects. In his early years, Vettel did not have the most endearing personality to a lot of people, as when he was a serial winner he could come across as arrogant, exemplified by the infamous Finger, and wasn't particularly popular with the British media and the British public, as he was regularly beating the British dream team of McLaren, Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Button. He also had a strained relationship with Red Bull teammate Mark Webber, who himself was never interested in playing a supporting role to Vettel, but was also never able to consistently match him on track, and was understandably irked by a younger, less experienced driver being given preferential treatment in the team. After moving to Ferrari, Vettel became a bit less highly strung, and together with teammate Kimi Raikkonen, with whom he remains close friends, gained a reputation for moaning over the radio about slower drivers ignoring blue flags, excerpts of which were turned into a song. In his final two years with Ferrari, he became a mentor to Charles Leclerc, and despite being beaten by him overall, left a very touching message on his helmet at the final race with Ferrari which said, To Charles, you were the most talented driver I came across in 15 years of F1. Don't waste it, but be sure whatever you do to be happy and smile. Thanks for everything. As well as Leclerc, in the past two years he has become something of a mentor and surrogate father to Mick Schumacher, giving him the support and instruction that as far as we know his own father Michael is not able to give him at the moment. Vessel is the third oldest driver on the grid, despite only being 35, and is seen as a voice of wisdom and authority by many in the Formula 1 paddock. His passion for the sport is clear to see, and was nicely summed up during the Grill the Grid competition in 2021, in which he was the only driver on the grid to correctly name every Formula 1 World Drivers' Champion going back to 1950, in reverse order, and was rightfully crowned Grill the Grid Champion for 2021. A major change to his public persona came in 2020. Following the death of George Floyd, the FIA launched an initiative called Re Race as One, and in the pre-race ceremonies that took place over the next two years, Vettel was one of the drivers that chose to take the knee, and he began turning up at races wearing attire making statements on environmentalism and LGBT rights. 
At the British Grand Prix in 2021, he wore a t-shirt with a simple message saying, please don't litter, keep it clean. And after the race, he stayed behind and helped clean up litter in the grandstands and visited a local recycling facility. At the Hungarian Grand Prix that year, he caused a stir by wearing a rainbow-coloured t-shirt emblazoned with the words Same Love, aimed at the Hungarian government's policy on barring same-sex unions, not recognising transgender individuals, and barring the exposure of minors to LGBT content, and he was reprimanded by the FIA for not removing the t-shirt during the national anthem. At the Canadian Grand Prix in 2022, he wore a t-shirt saying Stop Mining Tar Sands, Canada's Climate Crime, which he also had on his helmet. This elicited a response from Alberta's Minister for Energy, Sonia Savage, who in a series of tweets accused him of hypocrisy for the fact that he drives cars for a living, and that Aston Martin's title sponsor is Saudi oil company Aramco. Vettel got further accusations of hypocrisy when he made an historic appearance on the BBC political panel show Question Time, where he talked about climate change and the energy crisis, and was called out by presenter Fiona Bruce for the fact that he drives very uneconomical cars for a living. He responded by saying that he does doubt himself sometimes, which was one of the earliest signs of his impending retirement announcement. Later in the year in Austria, he ran a brightly coloured black and yellow helmet and a t-shirt that said Save the Bees, to promote the society project Biobean and Apfel, and with them helped a group of schoolchildren build a bee hotel. As well as pointing fingers at governments and politicians, he has also done the same with Formula One itself. At the British Grand Prix this year, he did a demonstration run in Nigel Mansell's championship winning Williams FW14B, nicknamed Red 5, which he had purchased himself two years earlier, as a tribute to the 30th anniversary of Mansell's title triumph, but mostly to promote the carbon neutral fuel that the car was running on. From 2026, Formula One cars will be running on carbon neutral fuels. He has also called out Formula One for the increasingly long calendars in the past couple of years, which often involve travelling to and from different continents several times, and racing in countries perpetuating the issues he speaks out on. Through his influence, Aston Martin have become ambassadors for Racing Pride, an LGBT rights group that aims to promote LGBT inclusivity within motorsport. He has also appeared on the front cover of Attitude magazine, expressing his support for any prospective LGBT Formula One drivers. After he is gone, it is clear that Vettel will not be short of hobbies and causes to occupy his time, now that he is no longer spending nine months of the year living out of a suitcase. He has hinted that a return in the future is a possibility, and he's certainly young enough, still being only 35. Hamilton and Alonso are 37 and 41 years old respectively, and driving just as strong as ever. His best friend Raikkonen retired at 42, and his hero Schumacher retired at 43. But for now... We must say goodbye, and I end with the ruminations from his retirement speech. I hereby announce my retirement from Formula 1 by the end of the 2022 season. Probably I should start with a long list of people to thank now, but I feel it is more important to explain the reasons behind my decision. I love this sport. It has been central to my life since I can remember. But as much as there's life on track, there's my life off track too. Being a racing driver has never been my sole identity. I very much believe in identity by who we are and how we treat others, rather than what we do. Who am I? I am Sebastian, father of three children and husband to a wonderful woman. I am curious and easily fascinated by passionate or skilled people. I am obsessed with perfection. I am tolerant and feel we all have the same rights to live no matter what we look like, where we come from and who we love. I love being outside and love nature and its wonders. I'm stubborn and impatient. I can be really annoying. I like to make people laugh. I like chocolate and the smell of fresh bread. My favourite colour is blue. I believe in change and progress and that every little bit makes a difference. I am an optimist and I believe that people are good. Next to racing, I have grown a family and I love being around them. I have grown other interests outside Formula 1. My passion for racing and Formula 1 comes with lots of time spent away from them and takes a lot of energy. Committing to my passion the way I did and the way I think is right no longer goes side by side with my wish to be a great father and husband. The energy it takes to become one with the car and the team, to chase perfection, takes focus and commitment. 
My goals have shifted from winning races and fighting for championships to seeing my children grow, passing on my values, helping them up when they fall, listening to them when they need me, not having to say goodbye, and most importantly, being able to learn from them and let them inspire me. Children are our future. Further, I feel there is so much to explore and learn about life and about myself. Speaking of the future, I feel we live in very decisive times and how we all shape these next years will determine our lives. My passion comes with certain aspects that I've learned to dislike. They might be solved in the future, but the will to apply that change has to grow much stronger and has to be leading to action today. Talk is not enough, and we cannot afford to wait. There is no alternative, the race is underway. My best race is still to come. I believe in moving forwards and moving on. Time is a one-way street, and I want to grow with the times. Looking back is only going to slow you down. I look forward to racing down unknown tracks, and I will be finding new challenges. The marks I left on track will stay until time and rain will wash them away. New ones will be put down. Tomorrow belongs to those shaping today. The next corner is in good hands as the new generation has already turned in. I believe there is still a race to win. Farewell, and thank you for letting me share the track with you. I've loved every bit of it. I wish Sebastian the very best in Abu Dhabi on Sunday, and with whatever awaits him in the future. There is still a race to be won. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Brook underscore F1. A huge shout out and thank you as ever to my Patreon subscribers, especially my newest subscriber and first ever top tier caterum subscriber Parvisian, and I'll see you all next time.